<clears throat> Dust slowly settles. <clears throat> Since separating herself from her companions, she has wandered her way down here to an old location, still smelling like mold and, well, the discarded tomes of the God of Humanity. She slowly tips a book over and braces it up in her old bed. Overall, the area is somewhat wretched, but still relatively clean. This place always was. This bunker on the edge of the coda, known as Station One. She slowly exhales as she looks at the tome. She reads a few sentences, and they bore into her mind slightly information that's meant to reside there. Then she closes her eyes and opens her own book. She begins to piece through what happened over the last few days. What happened not only in Beleth, but in Gravnir. And she feels the welling behind her eyes. That same black liquid begins to leak uh, from her right socket, and she slowly allows her breath to escape, letting the feeling travel over her. It's an experiment always was. She closes her eyes and allows the feeling to spread. And as she does, <clears throat> she feels a strange sensation start to spread throughout her body. She balances segments of her mind, almost performing the same motions that she did when she was working with Ace, trying to pull a single memory away. It lodges somewhere in the back of her head, and almost something illusory begins to form and spread. She hears a voice call from around the, uh, from around the passage. Hey, Riddle! Someone rushes in. Her eyes slowly drift open as th 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 somebody travels up behind her. The, Riddle! The duo that would drag her from her bed, regardless of the day, she swings her legs down. She's like, hey, guys. And from around the way, instead, another voice chimes out. <clears throat> hey, hi, um, Ruth, Willow, what are you doing? She watches this other her walk forward one step at a time. Uh, we were going to go training. Like, head over to the old training grounds? Yeah, training. Training, Riddle. Come on, you know you want to come with, right? Riddle sort of stops and thinks, She looks over at you, Willow. Training always meant one thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> She sort of, like, scratches the back of her head. Uh, I don't know. I'm sort of busy right now. I'm sorry, you two. Well, buzzkill. <laughs> okay. Uh, Come on, Rue. Well, you never join us. Yeah, I... I don't know. My constitution's not great, and I don't really see it getting much better. All right. Then just more for me and Ruth. Yeah, more training for us. Okay, come on. <laughs> Ruth slowly turns around as Riddle exhales and allows the memory to fade. It was something she managed to separate from herself, but... It's... A strange sensation. She's not 100% able to put her finger on what that process just was, so she decides to chase it. She allows the darkness to spread even more, and... She imagines herself. This time, buoyed on all sides, hemmed in by brilliant rainbow flame. A space inside of herself. She looks up at the sky, as that darkness begins to encroach again. A steady rainfall that eventually dies 
the entire world an almost abyssal black. And as that darkness deepens, her body too winds up coming equivalently contaminated. She fades, but she tries something. The process could only be called impromptu brain surgery. As the darkness interweaves with herself, she slowly extends a hand. She braces ancillary memories within this small little barrier and keeps them there. She lets that wash of oblivion take her body away, yet clenched in her fist, she remains focused on those nostalgic memories, preserving them even as everything floods through. Eventually, <clears throat> the darkness fades, and her eyes drift open. The core memories of the last few days are gone again. They're written in no small amount of detail in her book, but the specifics again are washed away. She looks down and rereads her last experiment. Preserve a segment of yourself through the lake. Sort of exhales. Makes sense. Yeah, of course it wouldn't work like that. Oh well, nothing's easy. She dusts herself off as she looks across the way. A figure hasn't faded. Slowly turns over and continues messing around with the books here. Little quietly moves over and almost places her ne uh, next to herself. An old vision of the past. The world seems to almost shimmer and distort around her as she rubs the side of her head. Okay. Maybe it did have more of an effect than I thought. The girl walks away, unaware of what's coming to her, but as she moves, everything around seems to similarly shimmer and shake. Riddle grips the side of her head, suddenly overwhelmed by a great headache. The amount of willpower it takes to remain focused even as one is erased cannot be underestimated. But to her, all of that effort perhaps caused a sprain or a strain in her brain. She takes another step forward and sort of kicks a book over as another figure manifests out of nothingness and turns the corner. Riddle slowly exhales and prepares for yet another vision as... Riddle. Hmm? Uh, y yeah? So here's where you are. I didn't expect you to be all the way down here. It took me a little bit to find you. S sorry, I was kind of reminiscing. I think reminiscing's the right word. Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we are due for an emergency surgery ten minutes ago? Oh, right. That was happening. That's... Yes. That's what Stein's, I was supposed to be doing. Right, of course. Stein's yeah. here, and he's been yeah. here, and right. I really appreciate it. Oh, he's yeah, no, he's dying. He's dying. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yes, um, let's go. So, uh, just a little disclaimer. Mm-hmm. I messed around with my brain. All right. Why now? A little bit. Um, uh, it... <clears throat> I guess I was feeling nostalgic. Okay. Um, <laughs> will it impede your ability to do the surgery? Uh, prob probably not. Her, uh, vision slowly, like, stretches over the door as, again, two, uh, almost visions of the past move over from that direction. They shift back and disappear. You feel a little flutter in the Song of Riddle's heart for a split second. She's like, yeah, it should be fine. All right, I'll keep Verona noted on this. So <laughs> if anything happens, just alert me, or I guess I'll probably be able to sense it, and we'll handle it. Uh, we need to go. <laughs> yeah, of course, I would of really course. love to talk about this with you more, but unfortunately, <sighs> this is a little urgent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she quietly mutters, and she holds out a hand to you. Trouble takes her hand, and they literally vaporize. You watch it, uh, 
the pair of them blurs away into individual grains of sand, disappearing, and again, another memory spikes up, being dragged away from this place, again, by the hand, by the person in front of her. But... Nah, this is too insidious. Because... We're in the ESP lab. Treble? Riddle? You boom! Touch down in the small VR chamber and sort of like... Uh, Riddle like studies herself like, whoa, 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 okay, okay. And... There's the patient. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, it's, uh, unfortunately, this is currently the best room we have to operate on him due to his condition. <laughs> Riddle, like, looks back and forth. Okay, okay. Uh, anything I need to do to prep? And then Cast chimes in over the, uh, comms like, Uh, Nine and Willow are ready for you whenever you're ready to grab them, Treble. Oh, all right. Yes. No, I need, do need to go get Willow uh, because this will be her first time in the ESP lab and I have to make sure she doesn't touch anything since she won't be allowed back in afterwards. Okay. Um, let me think. Is there anything you need to do to prep? Obviously things like wash your hands. The lab <laughs> is across the hall. Um, right, right, right. Riddles. Yes. Uh, a lot of the gear has already been prepared. He's on the... He, they've got probably... God, this is probably... They he's, probably have the setup from back when they were treating Seder in here. And there's like the fucking bed in the middle of the room with all the wires from the wall. So he is actually being suspended in the air right now uh, to okay, make this then like. We've upgraded. We've upgraded. Yep. <laughs> Good old flame emulator. Oh, uh, we finished up installing that in this room? Yes, indeed. Oh, okay. Riddle Hell yeah. Moves her way over. Trouble, you work your way out. You go, you get Willow, and you come back and. There you go. Grab these two. <laughs> Riddle throws up in the door. Like, like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, okay. is, is he's unconscious? Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody, like, looks at Stein for a second. Hurt to tell under the suit, but he's not talking. Yeah, he seems to be unconscious. Cass, did you sedate him? Or uh, do we need no. to add a, do we need to put a mm -hmm. sedative yeah, numbing no. agent, things like that? Yeah, definitely. All right. <laughs> Save for me to scan him. Uh, yeah, maybe. That's maybe. probably a good starting point. Okay. Do you but, want us to sedate him first, Nine? He shakes his head. Do it after I start, please. He w it won't hurt him. Okay. <laughs> He's going to put a hand on uh, the suit and see if he can get a scan of what's going on of the health of this entity through it. Mask, it's like you're reading my mind. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to post the encounter really fast. Existential surgery. You have three things to overcome. You have broken suit. I post the mechanics. Failing organs. And extra dimensional dermis. So. Oh, good. There are three areas that are currently failing on sign. You need to fix his suit. Fix his skin. Fix his organs. If you're capable no. of tackling each of these, he will be healed functionally. Uh, I'd suggest tackling them one at a time. Uh, and just let me know what you're going for. I'm glad that Circuit accidentally handled the hardest part of this for us by yes. turning into an orb. You managed to get a huge leg up by removing the phantasmal parasite from him, which would have been the nastiest complication. So, uh, tell me where you guys are starting. This is this is the scan that you produce. Nine, thank you very much for being illustrative for me. Double <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so first things first. He has. We should probably begin with his external shell. The um, the suit is broken, and we're going to need to fix it. But we need him out of the suit partially, at least right now, to fix his skin and organs, so let's start with his skin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're beginning with the extra-dimensional dermis, to read this out loud. Stein's outer layer is beyond comprehension. Operating on it applies a penalty of 5d6. But for every stage at which you're able to perceive this layer, remove 1d6 of penalty. Requires five successes. Dear God. So, okay. <clears throat> how are you going to perceive Stein's 
uh, bug flesh that gives you a uh, burn in real time. Looking at it, starts to pop and hiss and give you a headache. It's almost looking oh. like gl looking at glitching space. Can you? Uh... Oh, sorry. Oh. Hmm? No, uh, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this sounds kind of weird. He's floating in the air right now. Can you like just have him have a foot touch the ground? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Riddle lowers him down. All right, and I'm going to use. My, hold on, it's called... Oh! Veins oh. of the World! <laughs> Holy shit! Very clever! Okay! Uh, yeah, 2d6 bonus on all efforts to proceed. Yeah, literally verbatim. Uh, I knock 2d6 penalty, uh, penalty off this. You're at 3d6. Any other bright ideas, scientists? I'm gonna try to listen. I know Lovely. how difficult this can be for trouble with <laughs> things that are not in this world. Yes! So, uh, give me a roll to die. You, you start to listen in. I, okay. For that, uh, functionally for 27, uh, high pass. So, in this case, you listen, and you try to listen to the quality of his flesh, and it's unearthly. Alien. You Doesn't try sound to... like anything I've heard before, right? It sounds like a song that has been vaguely echoed throughout history, but is like... It sounds like a ye olde rendition of uh, what's played currently, almost like a, a medieval band decided to play one of the great, one of modernity's greatest hits. But from that, you're able to trace it back and be like, okay, I can partially perceive what's happening here. I knock another 1d6 penalty off. Um, uh, Riddle's uh, like, ooh, okay, I've got one actually. Um, I think I do too. Ooh, really? Nine's going to Nine has his eyes closed, so he's yep. not looking at the burn-inducing armor. He is yeah. only getting the data that his ESP is giving him about the health of the body. Ooh, lovely. If you can make pull-up metrics, I know it's going to be complicated with the burn armor in the way, but but based on what I can sense with my data, I can help synchronize it so that the data is accurate. <clears throat> I will actually... have something to work from. Cast chimes in. I can help with that. Yeah, I actually really appreciate that. I need to see if he is... Okay, how do I say this? There's a condition that we've seen before with Seder and the other two tomed hair people where they're... So you know how Ruth and... Willow are six element creatures technically, but they only have three elements active right now. But they have six, I suppose you could say, recessive elements. People like Seder and Charybdis have a total of six elements because they are two bodies fused into one. Mm. Seder, for example, being his world 10 self that they had in cryostasis that they fused with his world 12 self after kidnapping him, assumedly. Mm. Um, most of the Ashworld inhabitants are six element creatures naturally because humans, she does like with a roll of the eyes, are six element creatures. Is Stein a six element creature naturally or is there something going on with his external skin that makes him a fusion of two creatures causing him to have six elements? Ooh. Nine's brow furrows. Do pyromancers nat naturally have elements? It's hard because elements are a metric that I developed to measure, well, stuff here. Riddle pats herself. If I'm looking for the same markers, it's, it might be difficult, but you know, let's take a look. Um, it's the issue of we've only scanned one person from the Ash World, and that person is not a pyromancer. Yeah. Uh, Riddle slowly exhales, and she's gonna move over and cast you. Uh, give me a roll, Nine. This is a very, very interesting point to point to. To do or to die? Uh, give me a die then a do. Roll to die. Oh, Holy! Oh, dear lord. Okay. Hi, Nine. Uh, hi, Nine. Hi. <laughs> 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 Ah, uh, Jumping into doctor mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, roll to do. Okay. It's a nine! 
<laughs> Hold on. I just gotta... I gotta give you a very interesting number. <laughs> okay. Nine's gonna ask, can we tap Constantin? Um? Uh, yeah. If you need him. I'm going to ask yeah. for the database. Ooh. Anything oh, we um, have on pyromancers. I want I want to give myself a D6 to boost that up to a 25. Lovely! You'll love to see it. Give me a 1D6. Oh yeah. Yay! Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so you start to scan this person, Riddle goes through the usual process of, okay, we've gotta we've gotta quickly simulate different elemental responses from this individual. And she's nodding, she's nodding. Um you guys work through, you try it on a... You try this external layer on different things, and this would be... Okay. Uh, you're trying this external layer and just testing it against your database, different responses. Um, and Riddle's like, this genuinely can't be right. Huh. Um, if we're talking about elemental responses, uh, if we're three element beings, and trouble urine... Uh, a significantly more complex elemental being. Um, Riddle, like, looks down at Stein. Uh, I think we're measuring, just from the skin alone, 81 elemental reactions. Trouble fucking <laughs> clicking her fingers like I fucking knew it. <laughs> like, that means that Stein probably is from pre- Okay, we will need to get a sample from a different pyromancer. But, uh, if this is right, our theory that the world is losing elements every single time we start over, he might be a far be a pre, like pre Ashworld, because Ashworld is, we're three, Ashworld is six, the world before that would theoretically be 12, and then we would just keep going up and up and up. They are dwindling us down, trying to get us to one, we were right. Theoretically, Riddle. we need to get another sample, but... <laughs> Riddle pauses as, like, as Stein continues to, like, hang in the air, and she's like, okay, so does that pose a problem for our surgery? How are we supposed to recreate this? Well, first of all, we should start sectioning... Uh -huh. Okay, well, wait, we should wait till he's healed, but we should start sectioning off these elements. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble, like, but give me, though, but give me, though. <laughs> uh, Riddle, like, okay, um, how do you... I, the normal method won't work here. We need, a, we no, need to create we need something to that his something body else. will take. So, we do have... If what happened to Circuit is indi in, indicative of how Ace was keeping him alive, we have a couple of options, so the skin will be an issue. Hmm. Hmm. Trouble thinking. If we heal him manually, do you think his skin will regenerate on its own? I don't know. He's not like anything I've ever healed before. Yeah, I, I have no idea. one of the reasons idea. I haven't started trying yet. So... Hmm. I wonder if there's a way to synthesize a duplicate. We could take a sample. Yeah. No, you should definitely isolate a sample. But we'll do this. Because if you can isolate a sample, we might be able to use the elements we do have to recreate enough elemental compound to generate more of this. Nine's going to look off into space and then he's going to blink. Uh, there's something we can try, but it would slip my attention from him. And I think he needs the attention. And I don't know if it would work. Okay, what's your idea? Hit me with it before we make any decisions. If we split off a large enough part of his body, even temporarily, I might be able to regenerate it into another body. <laughs> that is true, but that's pretty risky, Nine. <laughs> Nods. I wouldn't be suggesting it if we had anything better to suggest, but he's so incompatible with anything we can create. We would need to make a much th more thorough analysis of his body to do that. Riddle, like, leans back. Okay. Hey, Willow, any yeah. bright ideas? <laughs> <laughs> I say this is wrong. <laughs> I, I say throwing you under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> the scientists are sciencing and Willow is like, hey, yo. I was like, uh, 
I mean, so there's a problem with his skin. We don't mm. know what it is. Yeah. And our options are to kind of find out what it is and see if we can heal it or just mm. regenerate it completely. Right. Nods. Do we have enough time to find out what each piece of his skin is? It it's, seems like he's got a lot going on over his, there. His skin is hard. actually mostly intact. The issue is that looking at his skin while operating is going to cause quite a lot of issues. We need to thoroughly analyze and repair any damage to it so that we can then operate on his organs. I so see. So viewing his skin is the, pro the, the issue. Mm. It's, we can't see you clearly. I think I got a. I think Keyhole can help with that a little bit. Well, the issue is Keyhole overwrites reality, right? Not just that, but it, you can view specific things. Alternate nah. possibilities. I don't want to shift Stein's physical makeup for our own convenience. <laughs> Cast actually chimes in. Uh, if Willow provides me the data from a projected future from or a projective alternative reality from keyhole i can functionally render it in place oh we is, could do a reflection okay is, is that sort of what you're suggesting willow yeah because i can you i could usually look at things before i choose to bring them in so okay. if we could somehow get i don't know like a projection or a hologram we could work on that on top of them we actually do use uh reflections to create simulations frequently. So this is actually very similar to a reflection communion. It's gathering data that your reflection is sending through flame yeah, this into is the actually, emulator. This is actually easy peasy. Okay. Yeah. Uh give me a go. Uh give me a uh give me a roll to do, Willow. Alright, let me die first. Uh grab this. Okay. Ooh, I drop uh, I drop the difficulty by one. So nice. the area re-renders into something else. And nine, you look at it, and you see that the shape is now a little more consistent between the directions from Trouble's Listen, uh, Willow's Tremor Sense, as well as this new rendering. You're like, I might be able to heal this as if it was normal. It's not what? normal, but you can pretend. <laughs> I have enough data to try. Okay. Uh, give it a shot. Do you want my assistance? Please. I need everyone's right. help. I will oh, roll to Nine's going to nine. keep. Nine's also going to keep. Uh, you do as they go. He's just continuously building the data model of Stein's body with cast. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, he, he's locked into a good thing. Let's roll to do. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. We oh. love to see it. God, this wow. is an early time to pull it, but I really don't want Stein to die. Yeah, yeah. Can I turn that into a 20? No. Oh, hmm. We Ta did say I'm that we had called. Hooked up to the hooked up to constant stability to revert a one to a 20. Hmm. I'll give yeah, you a 50. I will... How about this? I'll, I'll give you a 50. Your decision. I'll give you a 50-50. I'll, uh, you can't, this will work. I will add one complication later that I will not specify. How about that? <laughs> sure, whatever uh, works. And this is going to make things slightly harder, harder for you down the line, but you start to connect, like you basically reconnect the skin and you slide it over for a crit 20. Uh, you clear extra dimensional dermis immediately. Done. Something feels a little bit off, but you do manage to actually heal the man's skin. And the way it's rendered almost does make him look like almost a metallic bug. Um, and it fixes up and you're like, okay, we're good. You pull your hands I back. See, I can't tell anything's wrong, but I don't, I think something went wrong. Keep an eye on it. Okay. All right. Um, next. I post broken suit and failing organs. These are your two left. So we should do the organs next because we can prepare the suit retroactively. We need to figure out, are we giving him new organs? Are we giving him a reflection? Or are we going to give him another parasite? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Riddle. I can fix what's there, but what's wrong with them? He's looking like really thoughtfully at the data that we've already collected. Lovely. I will read out what's wrong with them. 
Uh, each act, Stein loses 66 HP. He is dying in real time. Jesus. All characters can act once before the six again. Any roll to do is done against this setting. Failing on a clash immediately deals 12d6 oh! damage to the patient. Jeez. So, yeah. Oh, uh, why Stein did is... you bring me? <laughs> because. Because you're the healer. You are the healer, my friend. Uh, Stein's body is dying. <laughs> Going over why, he... It seems like whatever organs that have been granted to him uh, are almost being rejected like a bad transplant. It, oh, you can tell, I'll give you something for free. You can tell that it's almost like the flame is incompatible. Uh, because he's a human. Um, the issue is he had a flame here before, didn't he? Yeah. Which he means did. that it must have been a flame that he was specifically compatible with, and this new flame he isn't compatible with. Right. Like, an incompatible reflection. Mm. So, Ace, based on the information reflection. we got from from Circuit... Uh, reflection. Wasn't there something... Wasn't that a possible suggestion that he bought yes. with the reflection? It was binding to a reflection, giving him new organs from different flame, or Ace put effectively based on what we saw with Circuit in the in his first round of surgery, Circuit made contact with the astral parasite. She makes air quotes that Ace implanted in his abdominal cavity. I <laughs> 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 to think of a polite way to put it, <laughs> and it transferred to her. The issue is that Circuit's body can't take more than one single point of damage basically point of yeah. damage basically so the second it bound to her it damaged her once and the body popped leaving just the parasite behind so it turned out that what ace put inside of stein was an apocalypse seed and if we need to put a new one in him we do have some in the lab mm. we have some apocalypse seeds or yes from when we were doing surgeries earlier the satyr's condition, the condition that we cured satyr, charybdis, and cult from, involves removing an apocalypse seed that was implanted into their bodies. I so see. We, do, we do actually have three of them on call. We have the apocalypse seed of ego, survival, and I don't remember the two that charybdis and cult had. Riddle sort of like nods. She's like, I think if we replace it with another parasite, he'll probably face complications down the line. Mm -hmm. If we're able to bring him back to whatever state he was in before, that'd be the ideal. I, I think in terms of order of options of desirability, one replaces organs with better flame, you know, compatible organs. Option two, reflection as like a middling option, and option three, new parasite. <laughs> well, because for clarity, um, for nine, I believe you know this, but Will, you might not. Reflections bind to the body. So for example, I'll use Seder as the example. His condition involved them having corrupted his ego element pretty thoroughly. So in order to, he had been bound to the apocalypse seed of ego, thus causing his ego levels to be extremely high. We had to remove that, thus it dropped it extremely low and in order to repair that massive cavity in his body while we were removing it he had a he had that and also a corruptive reflection that was bound to his body when you remove a high feedback reflection you literally it is unstitching aspects of your body from it and then we had to bind another reflection on almost like tearing a band-aid off while applying one what we would effectively be doing is his organs right now, the flame inside of them are weak, we would be applying a secondary element on it, almost like a bandage to fill in the gaps. Mm. Uh, Nine's, I, Nine has a weird, has gone on a weird thought journey. Yeah, so yeah, first yeah. question, uh, are any of Stein's needs compatible with human organs? They are, yes. It seems like, uh, it seems like a majority of his inner body is what we would call a human organ. <laughs> So he needs organs without flame in them, right? Uh, yeah. Theoretically, yes. 
Nine is like looking. <laughs> I have an idea similar to the first one. Which is? But it would require a lot of Graham's cooperation. Whoa. Are you going to try to remove the flame from the organs that are existing and then heal them? Or get uh, make make Graham we, an organ donor? Yeah, we can transplant organs from Graham to Stein one at a time. I can regenerate them. This would also theoretically work. The <laughs> issue is, what if neither of them are compatible blood donors? Wait a second! We don't need this. We don't need to do this. Okay. Simulacrums. We can, oh. we've got, we've got, uh, so we can, we can, we can literally, okay, no, we've got this, we've got this. Uh, Trouble, go get Mike. All right. Trouble literally <laughs> disappears simulacrum. in an instant. <laughs> and I didn't know they could make simulacrums without flame. I really don't know how to keep up on all the science. <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I can't keep up on the science at all. <laughs> <laughs> he just nods in like fucking <laughs> solidarity, keeping his eyes on the patient. Just He's just constantly monitoring Stein as this goes on. Uh, Riddle rushes her way back in and she's like, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, functionally, we've got a 3D printer, right? Mm -hmm. We can make compatible prosthetic organs from simulacrum parts. Uh, they're going to be ultra brittle so long as there isn't flame inside of them, which is why we have our little pure flame factory over here. Oh. Gestures over to Mike. That's uh, right. It's... Don't call me that. <laughs> pure flame, it might, his body might reject it less fiercely. Mm. Uh, it's functionally like having a universal blood donor. Oh, theoretically. Could we... Trouble's trying to figure out. No, he has too many. No, it wouldn't work. He's an older type. Okay, never mind. So, is everybody willing to literally lend me a hand with this? Not. Yeah, I'd love to replace some organs. <laughs> Thank you, Willow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. It's time for uh, Replace Stein's Organs Russian Roulette. Who is going to roll <laughs> low and cause him to hemorrhage horribly? <laughs> Why do you say these things? I think that Treble and Nine should focus on healing him. <laughs> that... Makes sense. So basically, if he takes any damage, you guys roll to heal. Meanwhile, Mike, Riddle, and Willow all just, you know. <laughs> okay, so. We should we... probably, before we add the new organs, we should remove the old ones, get all of that old flame that he's incompatible with out of his body before implanting the new flame. Because if we use pure flame, his natural body will, will color the flame and it will be compatible with him. But if oh, we have the old flame in there, it will, the old flame will color. You're so smart. All right. <laughs> Riddle, you you get rid of the old organs, I'll put in, I'll put in the new ones. Done, you're reading my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you watch, uh, you watch as Riddle, like, sort of assumes like a new, almost like, hand gesture with their ESP. Um, it's kind of easy to create space between things, I'm realizing. So all I need to do is create space between him and what's inside of him? And Riddle's gonna focus in. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Riddle will go first. Oh, no, that's existential surgery rolling. Okay, that's uh, 14. Riddle's only gotta be to 14. Um, she will... Uh, she's gonna lock in this. And then let's give it a good old roll to do. 1d6 bonus. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, thank God! Riddle, you watch his Riddle barely bless the man's organs out of himself and uh the, pro <laughs> the process you would assume would be horrifying but instead uh they simply float out of his body as individual just little bound triangles uh burning with riddle's esp and they sort of like float and flutter around the air uh riddle gestures with their hand again another hand motion flick a basically like a disposal shoot opens and then she just Boom! Throws them all down. Okay, well, you're off. Can I, can I listen to make sure Ooh. all of the flame is outside of his body? Ooh, yes. Give me a roll to die. Nine yeah. is just being a life support machine. Yes. Okay. You are good. You are good. <laughs> you're clear to add the new organs. <laughs> all right. Willow focuses in, and she picks picks up the organs, and she's going to make sure yeah. that she does not mess this up. I assume uh, that 
I assume that she's being thoroughly guided by nine troubled and every yeah. other person yeah. in this room. <laughs> it's it's okay. Um, uh, we actually did tests earlier. In terms of the steady, uh, in terms of steady hands, Willow's precision pretty much outdoes almost anyone. She's got a machine body and a reflection that binds to the hands to begin with. I wouldn't. Well, uh, I think. He's in good hands. <laughs> says before flicking off. Uh, and give me a roll to do. It's so good that literally every person in Opia has <gasps> medical training. <gasps> I'm in sync with Riddle. You're in, you and Riddle. Hell? Is that a thing we can do? No, you guys are good. You you don't need oh, to God. on this roll. Save it, please. <laughs> yeah. As you basically like, you move in and you start attaching them. And now I'm going to uh, up the difficulty. Uh, so. <laughs> You achieved your first few successes. Uh, he's still doing I, fine. Yeah. I assume now it's a matter of keeping him from rejecting them. His yes. body from rejecting the new organs. Next step, Mike adds the flame. Did <laughs> you make it? Uh, hold on, we're gonna see. Existential surgery. Oh, oh okay, that's a very bad roll for that. So, Mike exhales flame into the inside of him, and it starts to circulate, and it starts to take basically the blood type shifting. And now the flame properly matches the shape of his body, and you can see them get to work almost immediately. His body's moving. He's living. The life support of his suit is no longer necessary. You, you sort of pause there, um... You too, he's going to need a lot of healing now. His health is uh, pretty fucking low. <laughs> yeah, okay. Nine doesn't have mechanics, so... Yes. So we we, actually, do, we yeah. actually do have a mechanic for when Trouble and Nine do a combo heal. Yeah. From oh, way back in the old days. So we should sync. Do you remember you way back in the old days when we had to do all the syncing mechanics for every yes. member of Exolances? Nope! <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. We, have a, we have a super heal if the two of them sink. Fuck yes. Okay, roll to die. Give me a roll to die. If you guys okay. I'm gonna to start fight. locking out my dice. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to fall to me. Okay, um, so which number do I drop? So first of all, oh, it's a uh, drop your thing. Drop your blue and white, and you will have 19. Well, okay, yeah. take 9 away from what I just... So, yeah. if you take not, I'm trying to do math. <laughs> You're at 19. Okay, if I yeah. take nine away, then yeah. I'm perfectly synced. So you're I just good. You're to just, unlock. You literally just unlock. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you solved your math equation. Very nice. Okay. I just had to make yeah. sure I'm yeah. not good at mental math. No, you're honestly doing great. So yeah, you Fuck two yeah. sync up. Tell me what. Uh, tell me what this looks like. I know that we can effectively, like, heal wounds. Like, you can yeah. heal wounds, but our super is that we can AoE heal wounds if we heal together. Okay. So I'm just like, we attack, we do all of the AoE healing on one man to heal <laughs> all of the yeah! wounds. Yeah! <laughs> okay, so it's he basically starts- basically on every part of his body at once. So Treble is, like, listening to every single individual connection and cell and fucking- Sinking with nine to relay the exact right impact of healing to the right places. You fix in a million them up. places at once. You fix them up fast, and then again, that metallic bug-like skin slides down, and then finally, broken suit. Okay, here's the finishing touches. This one is actually somewhat easy to do, but with the difficulty of the surgery, it's. The, the negative consequences are very doable. Now you need to fix the suit. It's it's just a matter of repairing it. Uh, Riddle like looks down the way. Is like, <clears throat> uh, Willow. Yeah. Can you keyhole this thing? Oh yeah, sure, definitely. <clears throat> and cast like chimes in rendering. Uh, and give me a roll to do, Willow. <laughs> All right. Okay. Nice. Now you need to beat existential surgery. The difficulty's gone up. Oh roll god. Uh, okay, okay, 15. <clears throat> okay, 15. It only makes it to a 15. You manage to re-render it, and yes, you do get, indeed, you get your two successes, so you're down to three left. Um, you, you render what the suit should look like. Um, Riddle's like, okay, do we have any way to, like, replace the metals in here? Um, let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Um, 
I'm gonna go around more simulacrum parts. Trouble, get ready. All right. She rushes Nine's back. going to try and figure out from the... Because he can only really read the body. He can only yeah. read the biological parts. From them, he, he's going to try and read from where they connect to the suit, what the suit is supposed to do, and where and how much. So they at least have numbers so that even if they can't exactly replicate the specific parts, they know what they're aiming for. Lovely. Okay, so in this case, you will be... Uh, nine, give me a roll to die. You're going to be supporting Treble's roll. Uh, Riddle will also be doing the same thing. Oh, dear. Hi, nine. Um, Hi. Uh, Riddle's going to do the same thing. Uh, Treble, add 2d6 to a roll to get all this shit working. Okay. <laughs> I locked out my dice. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, uh, you managed to, you managed to, like, get everything going. You managed to, like, lock it all back together as we roll again for this. 15. Okay. I raised the, I raised the difficulty again. Uh, okay. I need to roll the nine before we do another roll. <laughs> yep. Uh, you managed to get another, you managed to get another success. And then finally, dear sweet microplastics is going to try to, she's going to try to fill the entire thing with flame. 24. Yes. Oh yeah! my God. She needed that because uh, now the surgery is adding a plus nine to each of its rolls. <laughs> so it exactly Ooh. gets to a 20 and Mike gets him up and running and you watch as the suit <laughs> turns off and then <laughs> turns back on the like almost cloudy blue mixed with almost lava lamp segments of red shifting again to this clear neon that you remember before and almost instantly <laughs> 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 Get yeah. back! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trouble baps him on the on the visor. Oh, ow, ow, what? Ow. Like, How are you feeling? Uh, yeah. Oh. Hold on, can I get some space? Oh, right, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, it's all, if it's all right, I need to keep in contact with you to monitor your health. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> oh, shit. He, like, pats himself down. Does it hurt anywhere? No, I kind of feel great. What the hell? A lot of the wounds okay, should have closed up from our healing, but there's a difference between natural healing process and healing, so... Also, a lot of our simulacrum organs sort of natively balance blood sugar and adrenaline levels. Beats the hell out of coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Cool. Uh, wow. Can't say I expected to be alive. Thanks. Free World 12 healthcare. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't cost you a damn. <laughs> <laughs> he like looks over to you, Willa, and then has a moment of, ah! <laughs> uh, hey again, I guess. Yeah, I told you we we're gonna we we're gonna fix you up. Oh. I guess there won't be a new pyromancer today. Damn shame. <laughs> ah. Just looking forward to my retirement. Hey, Axel Lancis, guys. Yes. I oh. owe you. <laughs> Trouble, oh. Trouble gets a fucking look on her face that's like, oh, you're admitting <laughs> it. You're <laughs> just gonna give us that. Okay. <laughs> Nine just like scratches his chin. <laughs> just uh, opens his closes his mouth a couple times, stops. Has, can't think of anything to say. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay, holy crap. Uh, can you let me down? Ooh, yeah, uh, of course. Do be careful. Um, there might be a small, a marginal amount of organ shifting as your body gets used to the placements and you move around more. Oh my god, it's been so long since I've had a kidney. This is great. <laughs> Wait, you didn't have a kidney before? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, that's what the flame was doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, uh, I... I Oh, this is so nice. <laughs> He's like patting his suit down. Holy crap. I could drink booze again. <laughs> I owe you. Oh my God. <laughs> please, please don't just yet. <laughs> right, just of course. Just don't immediately course, don't. explode yeah. the new organs that we gave you. Yeah, yeah. So, theoretically, we could replace them in emergency because they are replaceable now. Yeah, of course. Throws an arm around Willow. 
we will have to do life saving surgery yeah. on you again if that happens. Yeah, uh, before <laughs> then, you gotta give me some more of that food. I think I can digest it good now. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm about to make a bunch of food. <laughs> uh, 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 Mike sort of speaks up. Uh, Willow, I'm sorry to interrupt whatever's happening here. Um, we're needed elsewhere. Oh, right. Uh, okay. Hello. Is everything okay? Yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah. No. Grass wants to go even further beyond. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be doing some oh. uh, insane training. Ah, crap. Oh, you're <laughs> training with grass. He gives yeah. you a very small smile. You can do it. <laughs> Hello, smiles. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> knock the socks off whatever is coming. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, when it's done, you, me, food. God, I'm hungry. Oh my god. Nice. This trouble puts an arm up in front of the door. You can't leave the building yet. Yeah. Don't go in the basement of this building. Hey. Why is there a small intestine in addition to a lot? That, that's weird. That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he's happy. He's genuinely just like, wow, this is great. <laughs> I'm so happy for him. Uh, hey, Nine, would you mind keeping watch over this guy with me in here? He nods. I'd like to keep monitoring you for a while if that's okay. And there's a lot of... There's a lot we're best, but there's a lot we don't know about your body. And oh. don't... There might be additional complications. We want to keep an eye on him. Yeah, of course. Uh, he's, he actually like squats in the middle of the uh, floor and like goes cross-legged. Tell me about it. Come on. Okay, now he's actually ground. going to start telling him about it. Uh, <laughs> we, got, we had to synthesize organs using the simulacrums. Which we could just, he's just going to go into <laughs> clinical detail. Uh, Riddle pats, Riddle pats nine on the shoulder. Like, thank you so much. I always forget the fine print. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then <laughs> she's sort of like door slides open as Riddle and Trouble like walk back into the hall. Uh, Riddle's like, I'm glad he's happy about the organs. I thought he'd be screaming in horror. This is definitely a step up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You don't I... have an appendix. <laughs> Why do I need an appendix? That's for books. <laughs> <laughs> Based. Winston closes mouth again. Yeah. You don't have one. <laughs> Riddle like Riddle walks with troubles like you're headed over to work with Willow, right? Yeah, I need to go over everyone's She like opens up a little data pad and she's like, Okay, I'm just looking over the team's vitals to make sure everyone's good for this combat. It seems like everyone should be fine. Yeah, definitely. Uh you've got a good team. Um if I need help, actually no, it'll be fine. I'm I'm working. I'm actually going to be doing some work with Basil. That's similar, but not similar to what we just did. Oh, I see. All right. If you, I would say, if you need assistance, mm. <laughs> <laughs> if you need assist, I would say, if you need assistance, call me. But I will be in the middle of uh, fighting for my life. So yeah, good luck with um, that. I mean, unfortunately, you'll have to you've get it done. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and finally, last but not least, I wonder. She pauses. Right, 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 right. She like, uh, when I was messing with my memories, I forgot something important. What? Oh, right, that happened. Yes, yeah, tell me about uh, it. Uh, no, uh, well, that's important, but it's also not important right now. Um, Argos and Ace are kind of dealing with a cube. A what? A cube. They're dealing with a... <clears throat> what, what type of cube? A little more... It's covered in eyes. Is it a destruction cube or? We don't. We don't know. Okay. Don't know. Um, I'll update you as the situation. Yeah, just. Yeah, just, I'll, I'll just let you know. Keep my arms open. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna meet up with Willow now. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the slowly leave. And Riddle's like, right, cube, right, cube, <laughs> and. Speaking of which... <laughs> the door opens as you two walk in to see that the Esper Corps has lo uh, locked down the area. Cal has been evicted from his bar. It's fucked up, man. 
Oh, that's his apartment, <laughs> man! <laughs> well, should this is basically a biohazard. Shouldn't have lived in a cube zone then. <laughs> you, can stay, you can stay in Trevor's room at the dorms. <laughs> oh, he has a room hidden in Opia somewhere, but it's a man. I I'm gonna he put him. plants the water. Yeah, I'm putting him at the edge of the map. You're you're here, but not allowed in. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sitting outside with like a drinking cup from a vending machine, looking up at the sky, like, man. Don't worry, man. My bar. As soon as we decube the place, we'll get you back in. <laughs> Thumbs up, takes a drink. <clears throat> You move in as the Esper Core like it maintains the basic perimeter around Breach gives you the nod. Yeah, cool. Uh sure, we have a lot of uh cube expertise. Uh yeah. classic Ooh, now, I guess. Uh, Riddle yeah. Aaron died said Riddle Aaron died said to leave it to you two. Yeah, it's a classic cube scenario. Uh Oh. Well I'll let you take the lead then. Yeah, the, the first you seem thing to know what you're doing. Uh, the first thing you do is, um, do you guys? Yeah. <laughs> what is this thing? Oh, whoa. Huh. She, like, looks around. She thinks for a second. Who are you helping with this investigation? What do you mean? Who am I helping? Who are you? Uh, who, who does this investigation directly benefit? I mean, me, if we get it over with. In addition to you addition to me uh argos is this convenient for you uh it'd probably be pretty convenient for cal oh yeah uh i'll take it if it helps out argos it's fine who are you talking he actually, to he seems reasonable enough uh to, who, do you, who do you think i'm talking to oh. he does this breach quietly over in the corner i've seen him do this sometimes he just talks to himself it's fine <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've talked to this person before, Argos. Don't act surprised. Okay. Tell them hi. <laughs> they say hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah, Argos seems like a real enough one. He just <sighs> seems like he just wants to go home at the end of the day. I can kind of respect that. Okay, let's cube it up. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, what is this thing? Uh... I'm not entirely sure what type of demon it is, but it is definitely a demon. Okay. It's emitting a, it's emitting a low frequency that should be kind of difficult to hear, but it's raising the burn of everyone in this room. You should be fine, and Argos's natural resistance is high, but you might want to tell the Esper Corps to clean out. So this is a demon. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, Esper Corps, <laughs> back up. <laughs> Listen Demon to your protocols. Words back off. <laughs> yeah, it's ambiently causing burn to the people around it. Oh. We're fine because you have natural resistance and I'm me, uh, Espercor, uh, you know. <laughs> Breach remains sitting. <laughs> uh, you notice the two individuals in didn't move. You, you wave your hand in front of it and... Did the eyes this? follow me? They do! Seagazer immediately acts up. Ooh, it's responding to him. Ah. Uh, blink once if you can hear me. Don't blink at all if you can't. They all blink once. Is okay. that like one blink or is that like multiple? <laughs> kind of difficult to tell, anyway. huh? <laughs> I'm going to scan it. <laughs> you s you scan the cube and you look it over. Uh, give me a uh, give me a roll to die and a roll to do. Uh, twice, of course. Spice isn't here. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey. Hey. Doing this by the books. Ooh, and then again. Oh, thank God. Okay. That's fine. So you scan the cube, and it appears to be, um... There's no hollow space on the inside. In fact, the cube is solid through. Moving this would prove to be titanically difficult. Literally, you need someone as strong as Willow or with a teleportation ability like Ace to remove it from the premises. I was gonna say, it'd be difficult for, like, yeah. normies. <laughs> we have several people who can take care of this, no problem. Yes, exactly. Uh, removing it from the premises was likely not an option, you say, looking at the... Uh, uh, 
Esper core, but you should be able to remove it if it comes down to it. The question is, where the hell do you even move something like this? It's constantly emitting burn, and indeed, your LS confirms that this is happening. But, oh yeah, you go, you go. Got anyone you want to prank? <laughs> <laughs> put it I, in aura, I so do, but it's <laughs> <laughs> it a little too far. <laughs> want me to put it in Aura's bedroom? Put it in Riddle Arendite's bedroom. Actually, no, that'd be a present for her. Never mind. <laughs> Mom, I mean, we can do what we usually do to demons. Kill okay. it. I mean, like... True. Or... Yeah. Maybe we should interrogate it? I mean, yeah. Do you know Morse code? Blink once if you know Morse, Morse code. Twice if you don't. It's... <laughs> God, okay. Okay, time to roll for cube. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. Uh, it's, go it's gonna blink once. <laughs> well, okay. that's convenient. Uh, <laughs> the question, do you know what Argos? No. But I I've do. got the power of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. I'm even better than the internet. I decide what Seagazer says they know Morse code. Are you lying to me? No. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> I know many The fact that you had to ask if she was lying to you. <laughs> I'm just going to go with my way. <laughs> well, I, look, I, I don't... I don't know what Seagazer can do and can't do. If they say they know Morse code, then I'm going to believe them, okay? Look, okay, I'm Cube. Extremely talented. All right, Cube, start talking. <laughs> okay, we'll do a competition. We'll see who translates faster, Argos's internet or my brilliant mind. <laughs> okay, uh, Argos, uh, you're going to roll to do versus Seagazer to see if your internet browsing speed. Uh, take a 2d6 bonus on this. <laughs> and he's got 5G. Seagazer's gonna try somewhat hard on this. <laughs> you, you, uh, and at 2d6, this will be relevant. For your internet. Oh, 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 you beat her by one! As you guys, uh, uh, go through trying to translate the various blinks into long dots and dashes, and you're like, okay, and I got my translator app open, and, uh, it's saying... Argos, 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 damn it. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I We probably should have asked you a question before just telling you to talk, huh? <laughs> What's your name? It stops and it stops blinking and genuinely considers. And it uh, Morse codes oh, out. It's and like I... looking upward like it's thinking. What, what was that? It Morse codes out. Uh, not applicable. Tell him it's not applicable. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Zap got it. I hate that thing. Break his phone. <laughs> <laughs> what um? What are you doing here? Um. Ooh. Uh. It conveys across. Looking for you. Okay. Not that many eyes. <laughs> um. <laughs> Convey Theo's last hope. This a message from Theo? Yes. What does she need? You to find someone. Did you say find or bind? Find. Find, okay. <laughs> A little sus there. Um, so the, the app sometimes gets things wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have gotten it right. <laughs> <laughs> it's based on your search history, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, find who? Going over there. Why? <laughs> 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 you feel her presence staring over your shoulder, and uh, it um. Just it, had a chill again, run down my spine. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the phrase "last hope" omit one more time. Who do I need to find? Last hope again. Last hope. 
Come on, it's the last hope. Maybe it's, maybe again, it's based on your search history. Maybe it's the last pope. The pope. <laughs> Everyone incurs light amounts of burn. <laughs> Uh, the eye remains staring at you, and then it asks a question, and you hear for a split second, it's almost like a crackle in your ear. It's in her voice, not not your abs. Do you accept? Huh. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you oh, go. Cube solved. The cube begins to unfurl. <laughs> As everyone in the back sort of arms up, anyone with guns picks them up and aims at whatever is happening as the cube slowly starts to grind. And you see as it unfurls into a tremendous shape. It towers in front of you, and you two both recognize this thing. You've seen this demon once, each of you in a dream. And it turns, and it points at you, Argos. And then it collapses into nothingness. Just a pile of rubble. Well. Argos. For the record, that's not better than a cube. <laughs> Argos. I need your cow. looking through the door. <laughs> Argos, uh, your LS starts beeping. How's my burn doing? Oh! <laughs> oh, dang! You feel, oh, oh, God, so woozy. <clears throat> what, what just happened to me? <clears throat> it feels like, you know, you remember how Theo had almost bound up to one of your fingers? Mm-hmm. It feels like another demon just attempted to possess you. And it feels like right now your body is very technically possessed again, but you're still in full control of your limbs, your actions. It's so strange. You feel so odd. Whoa. Uh, okay. Hello in there? <laughs> you tried to say something. No demon responds. They didn't attempt to jump in or anything. They literally just hit you with a bunch of burn and... Oh. <sighs> so, it's maybe oh, that burn was God. the method of trying it to was. possess me and it failed? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that what the Pope is? Or... No! You could tell. If it wanted to possess you, it probably could have. It just raised your burn extremely high, almost threw the door open, and then didn't do anything with it. It just collapsed and died. Well, weird. We should okay. have used Morse. <laughs> so you're supposed uh, to find Fio's lost Pope with that? <laughs> Please be careful, he's nearly at 100. <laughs> <laughs> Argos, it's, Thank you, it's, a, <laughs> it's a funny sensation. You feel your consciousness struggling against almost the bounds of your skull, and you almost hear whispers on the wind. It's quite odd. I hear whispers on the wind? You do. Can I It's quiet lift in here. real hard? Uh, it seems like so long as you're in this building, it'll be difficult. Everybody, shut up! <laughs> oh god, he's going crazy. You, uh... You're, you are you are already time. talking to someone not here. I don't want to hear from you. <laughs> they're, they're here, you're just not appreciating them enough. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part where I'd normally say, now slap him, but it looks like the boy's been through enough. <laughs> I mean, it might reduce the burn. <laughs> Argos, you only heard half of that, but you really yeah. don't like the direction that it was going. <laughs> I, uh... I, I think I need some air. Night. Good job, best for core. Uh, good luck with cleanup. <laughs> Bridge, I think, like... like, it's it's not radiating burn anymore, right? No. Okay. 
Threat neutralized. Good job. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you might need Birdman. Uh, someone, someone big enough to carry that stuff. Uh, Breach puts a hand up. I'm big enough. It's fine. <laughs> she <laughs> works her way over. <laughs> As you guys go outside, and this will take me one second to prep. You walk outdoors, and... Well, I'll let the map speak for itself. <clears throat> okay. Uh oh. <clears throat> so. I don't like that music. Yeah. Oh, this will just. It'll just take but a second to set up. Like, you know. I haven't gone on a coda dive in a while, or like. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, and then over here. Jay, I have a question for you in your yeah. DMs. Let me see. I mean, the deadline for saving the prisoners down in the derelict is quite soon. So I already kind of knew that we'd be Fio's last hope if she didn't have anything together herself. But, uh... <laughs> like this, it's... There must be something else if she specifically had to reach out to me. Players? Here. And then... Oh. <clears throat> D-cubed. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everything completely normal. Yeah. As... Oh. You walk outside and... Ace, you like, look over at Argos for a second. Hey Argos, what are you doing? Surveying the, uh, surroundings. Uh... Yeah, yeah this, uh... Um. I, I look at my companion, companions. Are they reacting strangely to the... They all stare at you. Like you're normal? Oh, I think Gamer Boy's finally snapped. <laughs> Why do you have uh, to look like your LS is about to explode? Good news. Uh, it is. Uh, or bad news, depending on who you are. are I'm curious who you would think would find that good news. Hey, for everyone. You stare down the hallway and you see someone walking towards you. Tell me. Who is it you see? Ace first. Uh... Who I see? <laughs> yeah, who do you see? Oh man, Who's I'm just it? I'm just gonna take the easy answer. A guy soldier. Yeah, a guy soldier walks towards you. A guy soldier walks towards you. A guy soldier walks towards you. Certainly. Guys, what is that? It must be a guy soldier. Are you guys yeah, really I'm not back seeing away this? From that. I mean, I'm seeing a guy soldier, and some I'm feeling something's weird. Hey like, everyone, yeah. Tell them, tell them all to duck a sec. <laughs> Yo, duck a sec. You duck for once. Immediately one's... gets down. Everyone gets down in a moment as you watch the Geist soldier from your perspective move forwards, and then there is a rush of air and fluid over your head as you hit the deck and roll. And with that, I'm putting you all to BRP. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want everyone to clap for Jay for the cool thing that he figured out how to do <laughs> where I... he can have two players on different maps and they're <clears throat> and they can move their pogs and the pogs will move on the other maps so jackson was seeing that map the whole time yeah i have a screen opened on the other screen and i'm like what is Wait. going on <laughs> oh, damn, that's, that's actually... so cool <laughs>
<laughs> I, I no. didn't even realize what you were oh. doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm not seeing the same yeah, I'm seeing no. something quite different. Yeah, I'm go I, I, I hope you all enjoy. Uh, I'm getting fucky. <laughs> That's so cool! Uh, I'm gonna use the bathroom really quick. <laughs> So yeah, just never assume anything about anything between the two of you. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Hi chat, what's your favorite cube? Yeah, let me see. I'm trying to fix some of the stuff that's going on. You guys uh, in, uh... in call, in call, uh, do you guys want to see the whip of the thing I'm drawing? Yes. yes. Ooh. Yo. Oh, fuck yeah. That's awesome. The liquid. Chat, it's, oh, damn. When you get to see, one day chat will get to see this in chat. It's fucking baller. Hopefully tomorrow. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna run to the bathroom. Yo, someone in chat brought up a good, good point. Uh, Argus, stop fucking screen peeking. Screen <laughs> peeking, <laughs> <laughs> gamer. Not screen peeking. I'm watching streams. It's normal. You're stream stop sniping. Stream, stream I'm sniping. Stream sniping <laughs> myself. God. Uh. Bam. Bam. Okay. There we go. Sorry, I just had to grab the pop out of chat just because the thing isn't working, so I just wanted to chat on the screen. So this is oh, back. this is my oh, uh, quick oh, fix. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's oh. that's cool. So I'm going to um, this is going to take me a hot sec because I've actually got to just run a macro to um, basically hook up your movements now that I've copied you over onto this map. I've got to hook up your movement between the two maps, so it's going to take me one sec to get that properly set up. And the way I'm going Fuck to do this, hell. for the purposes of camera, is um, we are going to be mostly focused on Argos Vision, uh, yeah. and we will occasionally cut over to Ace Vision uh, to show what's happening in the finger quotes real world. But here's the thing. Camera manning for this will be simple, because whenever you, whenever and wherever you move Ace, it doesn't matter. You don't need to be on the other map. I could just flash to that to show what Argos isn't seeing. <laughs> God, that's so dope! Did, it, did I minimize the stream so I truly don't see the other map? Uh, no, nah, you're good. Do, do, do whatever you think is most fun. <laughs> All right, then I, I will. Fuck yeah. Oh, he's, hell yeah! He stream anyways, bro. <laughs> Okay. Going blind. Who watches Reflection? Am I right? Me! You guys! <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I have stream open! <laughs> hey, I chat. do! Hey, YouTube comments. For this anniversary episode, you know what you could do down below? Comment how this show has inspired you. That's right. That's that's actually pretty oh. sick. Caught, yeah. Yes, that's so lovely! Sick, cheesy. Yeah, so you're, look, man. We got Chester Cheeto over here. <laughs> yeah, dangerously I cheesy. Then it's I think that it's sweet and it's good for the anniversary, and you shouldn't make fun of people for yeah, expressing Jackson. their gratitude. I think nope. they'll say something real and true for once. Mm -hmm. I can't remember how the quote goes. Okay, let me let me get this macro working. I can't be distracted by your lovely banter. Quick banter. Banter. <laughs> uh, rhubarb, banter. rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. Dude, can't believe the September creature is dead. Damn, yeah. Fucked up. I had to kill her on stream. I'm like live. Oh, yeah. I miss I, her every day. I, I miss it. Cool. It's been five minutes. It's been. I it, miss her. Been, I miss been, my wife, Tails. It's been three days, man. <laughs> September was a long time ago. Oh my God. I forgot to age. It's been back, five Tanya. minutes. Can I? Can I say I'm remarkably pleased by uh. Oh yeah, I definitely got to link your tokens together, Seagazer. You're the most important oh, yes, person thank here. You. No, uh, I, Mask, I'm I'm remarkably pleased. I'm like I'm gonna throw nine into this scene on a lark, and then uh, that ruled. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm gonna throw Cal into the scene on a lark. Uh, guess what? Yay! Cal lives here now. <laughs> I love it when we throw Cal in the blender. 
I love when we throw Cal in the blender. Go, oh, like Kyle the Warrior gifting 20 subs. Holy shit. Oh, We're going to end this stream with every single viewer having a sub with you guys <laughs> gifting all these free subs. Oh my subs. god. This yeah, is the shit. real sub. The September creature died so that the channel might live. <laughs> Co comment, comment if you what somehow managed fuck? to dodge all the sub bullets going around. Yeah, you're eating. You guys are taking on the mantle now. Truly, the 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 Heavy more the exclusive. Head that wears the, crown. the more <laughs> exclusive club is not being subbed right now. Uh, <laughs> Stink pilot gifting ten gifted subs. Oh my god! Hi, that's oh my god. There we go. You you're guys all are going so, nuts. Y'all so are fucking, fucking cool. incredible. Uh, Mask, I'm gonna DM you so one so thing. Sweet. You're okay. so fucking sweet. Uh, or I'll just drop it in DM. Uh, uh, yeah. I I really liked doing uh, science on That was stream. so good, dude. <laughs> I, loved, so I, loved, I loved it because uh, the R&D lab is actually very genuinely Jesus. hard to get into. Jesus. Like, it's very genuinely hard to get oh. permission to get into the R&D lab. So Willow walked in for the first time showed up, helped them do science, and she will not be allowed back in. Yeah. <laughs> and then also on top of it, uh... MCRJ too cool just gifted, gifted another 10! Yeah. Jesus, nice. you guys. What You're the, the best. God. Okay. Mm. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no, I might have fucked something up. Oh no. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I might it's have... Fine. We have time. You can fix I might it. have inextricably linked, uh, uh, Ace and, uh, Cal's fates. Oh. <laughs> you guys are like, haha, now you're stuck with me too. <laughs> High five. Two men who never have anything bad happen to them. Ace Halo dodging hug. all of these yaoi bullets, cow walking <laughs> up like, heh <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's up, Jason? Uh, thank you for thank you for calling out to Seagazer. I wasn't expecting to play her this session like this, so I'm her. pretty psyched. <laughs> we just, I mean, like, dude, we just beat uh, Isomnium Files too, so like, it's time to it's win. Perfect Ooh. time. It's time to win a Macademy Award. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad the only thing I saw of Somnium Files was the cooking scene. Yeah, the cooking scene. That was like <laughs> amazing. That was a top tier game to me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I will need to run through a similar process when you shift maps uh, next, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, that uh, I'm I'm good. Sorry, uh, sorry about the delay. Uh, it's just uh, a, a, a technical thing about me adjusting to this. Um, so we're gonna catch up with Basil. <laughs> Let's go. Basil. It's time. It's time for Basil. Uh, okay. Let me find the right map. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, thank you for the four gifted subs. Oh, oh my god. god, thank you for the four gifted subs! Burr, 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 Final Dream Machine! Burr, burr, burr. Okay. Brennan, are you here? Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, let's go. The door slides open as Riddle rushes into the room. Uh, sorry, I'm late. <sighs> okay. What? What's the rush? Hey, uh, well, I want to make sure we get to this in proper time. Uh, it's it's a it's it's okay that I'm late. She pauses. She remembers actually a time a little while ago, and then oh, pain drives itself through the side of her head. She remembers a time very recently that leaving Basil alone or almost alone in a hospital room was very, very bad for her. And she's like, you're good? Yeah, I've been through worse. Okay. <laughs> um, she like moves her way in. Um, so, uh, about the thing that we were designing for you. Mm-hmm. Did you have any ideas? Uh, mostly I wanted to do it based off of your design. If you give me a good starting point, I can follow up. Okay. I, uh, I trust that you can make the fantasy of my brain come into reality through science. Yeah. You're looking for, what was it, a cradle of the self? Yeah. That's all. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can do that. <laughs> cradle of the self, um... 
Oh, uh, I guess it's kind of a subjective question, but it's very important. If we're going to build you what is functionally an effigy of you, how beautiful do you believe you are? This is obviously not my call to make. Or, um, ideally, how beautiful do you want to be? Ooh, yes. I don't know that that's for me to say. I'm not going to be the one looking at myself. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Yeah. How beautiful do you think I was? Hmm. <laughs> Riddle pauses and she's like, I kind of like that viewpoint. Okay. It's definitely something that I can work with. Uh, she, she pauses, nodding, and is like, okay. Um, what sort of feeling would you like it to evoke? Feeling? Feeling. Like when a you gaze feeling? upon the effigy, what would it feel like? Yeah, a warm feeling, a fuzzy feeling, a combative feeling, a light feeling. What are you thinking? Is infinite a feeling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Riddle is nodding along. Cam, Cam, she... Hmm. Basil's changed a lot. <laughs> He's so proud of her. Yeah. <laughs> I love it because I'm like, oh man, there should be a straight man in this room, right? To be like, oh, you guys are crazy. No. <laughs> like, wow, Basil, you've really grown up a lot. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, no. Uh, <clears throat> she's like, okay. Hmm. How much and how important is it for you to be influenced by the outside world? I would like to be able to choose when and when I can't. And how important is it for you to be able to influence others? The same answer. Lovely. She's smiling. That you should choose when you can influence and when you can't? Or that no. they should choose? That they should choose. All right. Riddle, riddle beams. <laughs> She's like, okay. Um, finally, I guess, uh, just a few more questions. What do you think is the nature of power? The nature of power. Hmm. From where does it originate? Communication. Lovely. <laughs> in the beginning there was no power when there was only one thing but when there was two things then one immediately had power over the other so the nature of power is that first moment of communication the ability to bridge the gap mm -hmm. lovely okay again I can very much work with this finally uh, one more question would you rather be someone hmm how do I put this? I guess maybe pulling from the ESP quiz is the most uh, efficient way to communicate this. Would you rather be someone that helps others or has helped yourself? I want to be someone who, in helping themselves, helps everyone. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I can work with that. <laughs> uh, Riddle's still taking notes, and she's like, okay, okay, one, one last thing. Um, which is more important to you? A defined path? that provides you an incredible amount of power and security or the possibility of the infinite unknown? I think you know the answer to that one. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> Riddle, Riddle stands up and she's like, okay, I'll get to work on this immediately. Thank you so much, Basil. It should be... And she sort of actually pauses. And as she looks away... She sort of sees something twitch on the far side of the room again as two figures almost melt out of the shimmering white light. They reform themselves here on the far side and Riddle pauses and stares. She remembers herself. A moment claimed by the lake as she stared into this room. You remember this situation. Well, I suppose she remembers the situation. You two at the time. Basil, you just come back from one of your big fights. A dive into the coda. It ended in horrifying violence and, to some extent, an effigy of self-destruction. Cam, you had a response to this. 
I think Cam was explaining to you, probably at your own questioning, why he was adverse to violence. He's like, well, I guess it's just not in my nature. Like, being violent is fine, I guess, for other people, but not really for me. Um, I don't really like holding power like that over other people. I think violence is something that you should only do in a situation where it's absolutely necessary, and you should understand that it has a lot of weight behind it when you do it. So then there is something that could change your nature then, right? You just haven't found it. Mm, no. It's more like my nature... Hmm. He kind of smiles. It's actually a little bit more like I'm choosing to abide by my nature instead. But consider this, if there's something that you care about more than your own self, your own nature, would you break your nature to protect that thing? Yes, of course. So you could change. Yes, but I'm. this is a choice. It's important to make this decision. Of course. It's a decision that I can put aside in matters of great importance, but it's important that I make it. And I think that's admirable. He smiles. <laughs> Riddle slowly stands up and moves across the room, coming back. As the visions fade away, she places herself again down next to Basil, and she's like, Hey, um... <sighs> it's weird of me to need this much reassurance on the subject, but, um... What do you think about violence? What do I think about violence? Yeah. Cam sort of tilts his head. Well, um, in my opinion, it's a form of communication. Mm. When all other forms fail, possibly the last resort. Last resort, though. Yeah, ideally. Well, <laughs> actually, she smiles and uh, she, uh, you, you see her like sort of move forwards, and she's like, "Hey, Basil, um, <laughs> I know you're my." like peer and one of my partners but i'm really proud of you like i don't know how else to say it without sounding too sappy or on the nose but um i, I genuinely really am thank you i'm very proud of you too riddle oh <laughs> riddle's like yeah uh she like looks over to cam and sort of like smiles back at him a little bit uh you feel a warmth emanating from riddle our indict that's like uncharacteristic for the level of isolation she's normally under and she's like okay um in that you case my answer mm, yeah i think violence is something that breaks my heart mm. she says performing acts of, vi acts of violence is heartbreaking but base is right when absolutely necessary absolutely necessary after all the heart can eventually be mended oh <laughs> riddle, riddle like every time basil's talk this conversation riddle's smile has just like come back and she's like i think i'm gonna take those words to heart she uh she smiles at you and um she... enough about me riddle um yeah you had mentioned when you were saving me from ceo5 there has been a change in your ESP? Hmm. She sort of stops. It's not something I fully understand the limits of yet, but I'm now capable of maintaining isolation around me at all times. Uh, it doesn't really wear on me anymore. She hops up on the windowsill. You remember her taking a similar stance the last time you talked in this room. Are She's... you capable or are you forced to? I guess I haven't really tried. I suppose I've always had a question about the nature of isolation. Hmm? You Just... are, in all respects, isolated from the world, correct? Yeah. Almost That's as a... though you're peering through a thin layer of something? That's a good way to put it, yeah. So, in theory, have you ever actually felt anything? Hmm. She, uh, she, like, sort of lets the breeze move past her late at night. She stares up at the ceiling. 
I have, yeah. It's not quite identical to how someone who can just reach out and touch something would feel something, but it's what you said before about communication, right? I've got people right. around me who are perfectly capable of living in this world, who go through a wide multitude of different experiences. They report them back to me, and in such, my own experience grows. She, um... She holds out her hands for a split second, and you see the ESP bubble sort of glowing around her. This is a manifestation of my ESP. Isolation, but... Isolation is something that I learned from someone. My ESP, if I was going to give it a name, underpinning it, would be Eternal Student. It's the capacity to learn from others. It's the acceptance that I'll never really fully understand anything, but that in ignorance, I have the potential for, well, endless discovery. But essentially, you are functioning without one of your senses. Hmm. Most of them, in fact. She, uh... Basil kind of like scooch, scooches because the bed is too big for her. Yeah, <laughs> off scooch, of the bed. Scooch, scooch. <laughs> and uh, she walks up to Riddle and she says, "What if there was a chance for you to actually feel something, like in the traditional sense, not in the theoretical sense?" She tilts her head slightly. Um, Basil yeah. reaches into herself. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, reaches into the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> which is still there, right? Of course, yeah. No, the hotel is intact. You are a hotel now. She's going to fish around and she's going to find uh, a flower. Oh. And she's going to pull it out and she's going to mimic what Riddle just did with her ESP. But essentially the opposite because her power is the opposite. <laughs> you hold out the flower and Riddle actually slowly reaches down and she's going to take it. I've imbued this flower with my power of incorporation. It <laughs> reaches out to whatever it touches. I think, in theory, it might be able to neutralize if not only for a second. Riddle holds it and then you see her expression sort of get a little more static as it floats in the air and the flower starts to spin faster and faster almost like a drill boring down through an invisible barrier and it sits there and Riddle tries to focus hard on this for a second and for a split second the flower boom juts forward and jabs her in the palm and her expression actually doesn't change it's silent. She looks down at it. And you get a line of flattery that you can tell based on Riddle's omission currently means quite a lot. Oh. It seems I've learned from you too now. What's that? <laughs> she, uh, she actually, like, uh, the flower starts to float again, up above her hand. Hmm. She, she sort of thinks. And then she looks back over here to when she was having the discussion with, uh, with Cam. Looks over to Cam, thinks. Hmm. I think I'm learning the beauty of a malleable worldview. <laughs> she says smiling <laughs> and if the world is malleable that means each and every one of us is she pauses which means if we don't like our shapes we can change them right exactly riddle sort of pauses and she, like, slowly exhales. Are you happy with who you are now, Basil? I'm happy with who I'm becoming. I think we're all in a process of mutation. Specific specifically those of us in this world. Mm. It was made incomplete, from what I understand. 
So everything that has allowed life to come this far has been adaptation. Was this world made incomplete? Mm. Riddle like looks over and nods. In terms of the functional, well, in terms of functional arrangement, we're missing one element on all previous worlds, at least from the origin of uh, this world's inception. It eventually came to be, but wasn't present until the God of Humanity's reign. Oh, you're talking about World 12. Mm. She nods. Okay. Uh, Riddle's like. Un unfortunately, um, it seems that I might have been somewhat responsible for that lacking. But at the same time, I don't think I regret it. Oh. Riddle pauses and she's like, uh, what do you mean by that? Did you figure it out? Um, as I understand something, there was meant to be a god of humanity before the one that you know. Riddle is watching you. Close. And I believe throughout infinite world possibilities, my responsibility was to be that. Riddle's eyes watch you closely. And as you say that out loud, you see... You see, uh, run me through Cam's face journey. Cam? Okay. <laughs> No. This Cam's face journey is very specific. He Cam actually had this theory for a while. Through he's been the person watching Basil very closely since the beginning. And he's like, I think Basil literally might be God. <laughs> was a realization <laughs> that he had at some point. And he was like, I don't it was during the end of Act One when they were engaged and when they were in the coda and they were engaging with all those things, Cam was like, oh, I think I might know what Geist was trying to do. But he was like, I, I'm not gonna make that assertion because I think that's one, not my place, two, uh, could be wrong. And he's been observing Basil. He goes through a face journey where it's like, he's so proud of you. He's like, oh my God, okay. It's the feeling of, wow, I'm so proud of you. And then also the slight satisfaction of, Okay, so I wasn't crazy. <laughs> and then there's a look on his face that is like a disgruntled look, like a, this is the closest face he has to it. Maybe like a mixture of that one and like a, and like this one, a mixture of those two. And he's, and then he goes back to this one and then he just neutralizes. Riddle on the other hand looks straight down at you, and then almost telltale, you get the confirmation that your hypothesis is correct oh. as she reaches her hands out and puts them on your shoulders, and she's like, Basil, <clears throat> I need to ask you for a really big favor. Yes. Okay. She starts to breathe a little more heavily. I'm gonna try something. Right now, I don't think I can keep what you just told me. <clears throat> Anything you need. She, she like, you notice her body start to shake a little bit. I'm gonna just take a little rest. I need you to remind me everything we talked about in this room, okay? Um, and... <clears throat> when I wake up, if I don't remember... Give me that flower again, okay? Okay, I can do that. It's actually very easy. You watch as Riddle takes her hand, forms an ESP barrier in her palm, and just sits there with it as you see her close her eyes and almost become statue-like in the corner. It seems like she is just letting the... It seems like she's just letting the Icar run its run its course right here, right now, because she wants to hold on to these memories. She's trying so to badly. Push out the venom. Yeah. She's trying to keep everything she can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Cav is just making sure she doesn't fall over. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of ready her, and she remains inert in the corner for quite some time. 
at the center of that ESP field. Flower wheeling like a helicopter. <laughs> Brother, like, hey, I'm gonna stab you emotionally this time. Like, hey, don't worry about it, fam. I'm coming for your life. Oh, you think do I'm you... done? Brennan, Brennan, do you like Cam being like all of Act One trying to find a very gentle way to tell Basil that he thinks that she might be God, not I managing can... it to do it? Basil, I understand that is a thing. <laughs> yeah. she's, like, she's, she's like, I need to figure out how to tell Basil that I think she might be God in a way that won't make gestures at act one basil a problem <laughs> basil leaves comes back i think that might be god can like oh thank god <laughs> oh she figured it out fuck yeah okay, this oh, was gonna right. be a nightmare to explain the birds and the bees i, I, I think you mean oh thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> well the issue is cam okay, like I thought you were God. You came back, you said, I think I might have been God, and then I decided to stop being God and become a stranger instead. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, based? <laughs> based in human build? Based in human build? Extremely cool of you, Basil. Uh, over in the VR meeting hall. <clears throat> These two have been catching up bit by bit on, again, the plan for the upcoming conflict. Now, this is the moment that I'm going to fast forward. Full thing, full thing, obviously disclosed on uh, on the Patreon. The turn by turn combat. Uh, grasp the earth to to run through this sequence of events as it occurred. Grasp the earth uh, prepped you, Willow, to go deeper down. Your main goal was to go one step further than he could ever travel. His path is a long and difficult one. Across history, he's fought a multitude of different opponents. But, frequently, he falls short. Either he's KO'd in a dramatic fight, or he's brought down by his opponent. Regardless, he still has these residual memories. If you're able to live up to his capabilities and push beyond that, or at the very least meet him, you can take the next step together. The step that you're going to take tonight. So you did. You organized your squad, trouble appearing first, and then, of course, why don't you run me through your uh, your additional recruits, Willow? <laughs> yep, I chose, uh, obviously, microphone. Uh, hey, hey guys, Mike, scuttling in. <clears throat> um, uh, I'm glad I'm here to assist. I hope I'm useful. And next, I chose Ruth. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> and obviously, the yeah. most famous uh, member of all, uh, Grillo. <laughs> <laughs> Riddle wheeling Grillo into the room in her sealed wheelchair. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Mighty fine choice. Now. This scenario was organized with uh, actually very good team cohesion between Tre <laughs> uh, Treble Willow, uh, Mike, and Ruth. You all have very complimentary kits, the uh, odd outlier notwithstanding. Grillo, naturally at first, resisted being included in this operation. Her functionality as a piece of, uh, as a quote, piece of history for Geist uh, would not did not well equip her to deal with uh, Opia and its challenges. But it turns out something very simple happened. Willow is no longer worth preserving in Geist's mind. They were apparently saving her body to send forward to the next world. But it seems like, at least presently, that is no longer necessary. As such, Grillo has no place to go and nothing to do. Willow... Perhaps ultra magnanimously, actually offered to Grillo to maintain control of her body. An offer that Grillo is deeply, deeply confused by. But she thought it was some sort of trick. The upcoming conflict proved to be something different, however. The pitched battle, as it occurs, was exceptionally brutal, driving you all 
to the absolute extreme of what you were all capable of. We will catch up with the conclusion of that shortly after we check in. On a few individuals over here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just do me a favor, do me a favor. <clears throat> uh, please move Argos one space mm. to the left. Lovely, okay, perfect. Then we're good. <laughs> then everything's fine. I'm going to bring the player tab over to, uh... There you go. Oh, good. <laughs> this figure sort of slouches forward and just stumbles and collapses on the ground. It holds perfectly still. What was that? What are you seeing, just, dude? Like... Bent over our heads. It was f fluid. Now for you, that body is currently. Hold on, I'm gonna separate Jackson from the player tab and put you over here. <laughs> and I'm going to put the player tab over here. <clears throat> for you all, one of the guy's tusks moved towards you and then burst. And good it job. Was really <laughs> weird, but. You know, for Argos. <laughs> uh, whatever that box did to me, I, I'm seeing some really weird stuff right now. You. Did you see a geist husk just explode? No, I see a, a demon. Ah, oh, damn. That fell <laughs> over. Oh, fantastic. Whoa, weird. Okay, he sees a demon. How odd. Hmm. Can I scan it? Yeah. You want to investigate this thing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Nice score. Oh, nice. Oh. You look at this being in front of you, and as you try to break down its composition, you, ah, it hurts your head for a second. And it almost feels like something's out there looking for you, watching for you. Uh, oh, that's a very high roll. Argos, give me a roll oh. today. Okay, holy shit. <laughs> oh shit, oh fuck, oh god. You stare at this, and for a, split, <laughs> for a split second, that sunset almost seems to flare into an eye. And it feels like it's looking for you. Something's looking for you. And and you feel a presence up here almost bubble and burst for a moment. And almost uh, pitch black ichor spreads across the ground. Long strings of chitin growing out of the floor. They almost weave long vines and they sweep forwards. And they almost latch onto this being and start to cover it up. It, it looks like long tendrils or spines, and then it just pauses there. Subdued. So, what do you guys see is just happening? Uh, allow me to move them to here. Uh, it is a guy's tusk. It is holding still on the ground. And then, um... Literally nothing. Still Sigis guys on the ground. Seagazer's gonna speak up and be like... That guy had his comms on a second ago and was submitting life signs. They all have ceased. Okay. Well. Tell really. him he's dead. Huh. I really hope that thing was a husk. And good news, guy soldier's dead. Uh, don't get too close. I'm seeing some weird tentacle things reached out and seized it. Oh no. Oh no, make him go first. <laughs> what? Actually, no, you could go first. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> Are you sure you want to get closer to it? You start, you start to, like, uh, so I'm going to catch up with the, we're going to do investigations across realities here. Ace, are you looking oh. at this thing? I am poking it with my foot. You poke it with your <laughs> foot and... 
the fluid that makes up the husks leaks from holes and gaps in its armor. Oh. It, it almost looks like oh. this person was reduced to a soup. No, I... You do that? Do you guys are? Oh, no, absolutely not. I think this is a naturally occurring soup. Oh, uh, okay. That's a way to put it. What a sentence. <laughs> listen, listen, these things happen sometimes. Wonderful what shapes you... they tie themselves into. Yeah. <laughs> you sort of like push it over. Argos, it's really strange. It almost feels like that thing was moving towards you very willingly. It was like trying to reach out and get, get in contact with you. The eye seemed like it was trying to peer into you. It reminded you of the eye of, eye of the cube, but far more maddened. The cube. Now that was the eye of someone who moved with purpose. That was a that was a cube that knew what it was doing. <laughs> Whatever the eye was in there, it was twitching occasionally. Pupil dilating and focusing. Well, okay. Uh, this has got something to do with demons. Theo contacted me with the cube, I believe. But now... Wait, Theo? Yeah. Oh, okay. I know why it showed up on the stage. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, but... No, I mean uh, more than just the obvious. I told you that I served demons after hours, right? No. <laughs> I thought you were, like, speaking metaphorically. <laughs> Seagazer. No, that leads to way too much, many problems right in our line of work. Seagazer lets out a cackle and kicks her legs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Theo used to use that stage, and I don't know the deal with it. Uh, Trouble wound up helping me basically make sure that the whole setup was safe, but it used to pick up on her voice from all the way down in the coda. Oh. So there was something special about it that let it be sort of a conduit for her. Yeah, I basically managed to pick a place that's like in the exact right it's like it's like sound bouncing around and this is where it happens to come out, something like that. Ah. So she tell used... you more about the science. Yeah, she must have used that to sense that cube. That's my guess. Yeah. Well <laughs> now we've got something else I th and I think it's looking for me look you want my take of what's going on sure you're looking for something you're that so high smart <laughs> with that high a burn the reason you're able to see these things is because of that right but mm -hmm. the downside to having that high a burn you're now the most popular person in Feet City Aren't you lucky? Quite the feat, considering Ace Gala teams right here. Yeah, are you feeling jealous? No, relieved. <laughs> <laughs> At least now you'll understand how I feel. If we tr if we follow this train of logic, why not Don't seek mention out- mention trains of logic. <laughs> <laughs> if we follow this engine of compulsion- Not that I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have high enough burn. <laughs> <laughs> if we follow this limousine of instrumentality, then <laughs> uh, why not try to contact other people with either demonic possession or experiences in the past being taken over by instrumentality? If you're looking for clues or things that you could see, why not hunt among the infected? Oh. No, I, I just realized that uh, you just created a list with Lover Cold's name on it. Yeah, who, <laughs> who has been? Like, well, Argos uh, would probably know this better than yeah. Jackson does. <laughs> uh, uh, you? Yeah, no, you go, you go. Well, we know th th that a lot of the people in the Undercity were uh, demonically possessed. Uh, one of them being Colt. Sadly, Colt's not here. Uh, Rip in peace, big guy. Uh, there's Melly. Who I think was demonically possessed by that same demon that, uh, you know. God, I miss her. Cube or Melly? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love 
love it because they stops to say that. <laughs> uh, so Melly is probably a good, accurate one. Uh, he steps over the body. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then there's uh, obviously Lover Cold and Dr. Sokova, who we've encountered before. Uh, odds are, I think Melly is a good option, seeing as uh, they were points over at the where the cube would would have been. The cube is no more cubed, but he's yet a man. <laughs> Cubeless. <laughs> yeah, you know, what are the chances I can just call one of them on my phone? And You can call literally all of them. I mean, <laughs> do you think Melly has something better to do? Oh, it, this just... I mean, she has two jobs. She's married. <laughs> I, don't I don't think she's married. <laughs> I'm gonna call Melly. I don't think Willow believes the in marriage. Does he guys think Melly is married? That's adorable. Sea <laughs> Gazer goes quiet for a little bit. I love you guys hearing half of the conversation and assuming yeah. things about Sea Gazer. How <laughs> that interaction was so cute. <laughs> you call up Melly, and again, uh, she flares on your friend like, Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, so I've got this sort of weird situation going on. Yeah, uh, what's going on exactly? I'm sort of possessed by instrumentality in possibly a good ah, way. Ah, shit, you two. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean, you two? Yeah, no, like, uh, uh, okay. You have an experiences, you see visions and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, he, yeah, no, it gets bad. Yeah, he's not Robin Banks yet, but... <laughs> hey, uh, Millie, what, check your LS. What's your burn at right now? Mine's pretty low, but I, I'm familiar with the experience. Um, oh, okay. Unfortunately, I can't help anymore. My, well, my burn's been actually super low and ultra rock solid ever since I started dating Willow. Oh, congratulations. Do you know what a Pope is? She happy is for you. <laughs> She is married. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> hey, my LS just pinged. What the hell was that, Ace? <laughs> I don't know, I'm just trying to help. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> you are a f goddamn entity now, aren't you? <laughs> I got nothing better to do. Uh, <laughs> so, it looks good on you. If you want, um, uh, I could talk to people around here and figure out if any of the instrumentality possessed are still rocking the visions, too. Yeah, I'm... I feel like this is meant to help me find what I'm looking for, but I don't suppose last hope means anything to you? Last hope? No. Um, oh, right, if, if you're in there. Uh, wait, you're, like, moving around and you're acting yourself. What the hell? Yeah, his LS yeah, is way too high. Yeah, he's basically what? should be possessed already. But he's. I not. got this thing that uh, stops me from getting possessed because of Theo. There's the whole. There's no. There's no demon. There's no demon screaming in your ear twenty four seven. Only me. <laughs> Look over it, Ace. I think you should get close. Only the normal ones. <laughs> Look. Uh, no, not quite. Okay. <laughs> okay, then. I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to people. Just um, stay away from like the, the like chitin stuff, okay? Chitin you... stuff. Yeah. Like black ooze. Yeah. Stay yeah. away from that. Yep. Don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> Cheering's up. Black twice ooze. has nothing to do with this. <laughs> right. Sigizer says, uh, quietly off to the side. Okay, so I guess we're just supposed to stay put. I mean, uh, I mean, we probably have people no. or things or people things bearing down on our location right now. Yeah, let's be proactive and get out there. Okay, well, uh, we gotta. Uh, well, Whoa, peering, there it is. Peering over the wall. Nope, none of you guys see it. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> Son of a <laughs> bitch, we don't. Not yeah. still right my day. behind you, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, you you are very right in that assessment. I think we should move. Don't worry, I'll definitely <laughs> okay. tell you 
where the demons are. Okay. Oh. Jump over the, the kite. Like, uh, like, do your do your antennas like pick up anything? Any like frequencies? Like, or, or are those just like cosmetic? Dude. What? Dude. I don't have antennas. I don't know how they work. I've got oh, one. Antenna. Now I do have. Well, I have two things babbling in my ear, but. <laughs> I've got an antenna. It picks up I-7. Alright, how about this? You need to look for something while you can see whatever's going on, right? Yeah. And we need to keep moving hopeful. so that you can get a... keep... not get... Uh, yeah, got Makes like a chomping motion. <laughs> hey Ace, how fast can you run? I mean, I can teleport. It's not the question, but... <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I can run. I want you to, like, pick him up. No, I was gonna ask how well you think you can keep up with a motorcycle. Oh, God. Look. <laughs> Hot up. <laughs> Look, he's talking to himself. <laughs> I'm called for. <laughs> oh, man. Is this what it's As... like to be Mike? As you approach, yes, actually, yes. <laughs> as you as that. you approach one of these Holy golden shit. cracks, you you sort of like pause, looking into it for a second, and the voice gets louder and louder for a split second. It almost feels like you're gonna you're gonna lose yourself, and then you actually hear a your voice sort of call out. <clears throat> Hey, how's it going, you guys? Uh, Dr. Sakova walks towards you. Oh, uh, hey, Doc. What you doing up here? Oh. Uh, she, like, she stops and she, like, starts and, like, looks over at, uh, Argos. <laughs> and Argos. Is that... Dr. Sakova? <clears throat> huh? Oh, oh yeah, my. this is... You two haven't met. He's gonna, like, look quietly over at you and, like, God, you don't have a hut or anything, but he'll say, but he will sort of st lean back and say, what are you seeing? <laughs> uh, <it's> spaghetti. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Linguine. Hey, do we look normal? Yeah. Um. Hey, Argos. Give me a roll yeah. two. Argus, you see her. <laughs> oh, I see Sea Gazer. She is clinging to Ace's back. <laughs> oh, wow. Floating around him, like one arm around his shoulder, just like suspended in the air. Cool, I can finally see the little devil on your shoulder, Ace. What do you mean, little? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not important right now. So you're apparently speaking, seeing spaghetti. Hey, Sokova, do you know what a pope is? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you just did you just seriously ping my LS? Uh, hi. Um, Melly told me that you needed some help. I just rode up the elevator. She like moves forward. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm still recovering from possession myself. Uh, it's, you've been possessed by a demon before, right? I have, yeah, when you all fought me. I believe I tried to chop his head off. Yeah. It? So I think I'm I'm going through that now. <laughs> and I'm... Things are looking weird, but I'm trying to find something while I've got this whole possession thing going oh. on. Okay. Well, uh... Not, uh... not like proper possessed. I'm not going to attack or anything. Don't worry. Okay. So you've... You're trying to find something. Okay, uh, I'll I'll do my best to help. What are the clues you got left? Uh, the clues are last hope. Wait, wait. Uh... Hmm? <laughs> Look, Argus. <laughs> so you said you're not seeing Dr. Sokova right now, right? Yeah. How do we know we can trust them? Oh, well, I would time. hope you would have said something if I just... <laughs> well, well, you see, Aloha was muted and tried to say something, but realized he was muted. <laughs> <laughs> so... 
<laughs> Dr. Sakova never make that error. Dr. Sakova's gonna think to herself and she's like Okay, given a last hope, chord of instrumentality. Hey, do you hear the voices? Are they overwhelming right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, we should probably get you out of here. Uh Okay. Actually, no. Uh she puts her hands on your shoulders. I'm gonna have to ask you for something really hard, Argos. What? I'm gonna need you to listen really close. You're gonna need to try to pick out one voice in the mass. That one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got the meowing side effects too. <laughs> yeah, no, that'll. Uh, that'll sorry, happen. that's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Cal, do do the thing that I DM'd you about. <laughs> that works oh, perfectly. Shit. Well, uh, hang on, I'll be right back. <laughs> he exits in now? that direction. <laughs> My time of need. <laughs> Give me just a sec. He sort of exits and disappears. And then uh, Sokova is like, so? Do your best. Just give it a listen. If you're looking for something in particular, you're going to need to pick it out from all those screams. Mm. Read. Oh, yeah, you don't need to read that. You roll dice at this. That is... that. Thank flood, God. That flood of information is going to continue infinitely. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right, yeah. So is that a roll to do? That is a roll to do. <laughs> you try to focus and your head begins to hurt. And Oh, it's so hard without a moderator. <laughs> <laughs> your eyes, like, slowly open and close as... Your vision drifts almost shut for a moment as uh, uh, ugh, ugh. it feels so strange. This woman's asking you nonsense. It's utter can complete nonsense. She's saying, listen to this. How could anyone listen to this? And then there's a realization that passes through your head. You are not listening. You are another vestigial appendage of whatever this thing is. You do not need to listen. You are singing, singing in the chorus. You have joined in with the rest of them, and you are gleeful, the worm that's in the back of your head. It only gathers to the smart, the artistically endowed, those clever and eloquent enough. You could tell that these would be screams, but no, it gathers only poets and those that can sing too. And uh, as you focus on this for a second, you oh, you feel almost bile rise to the back of your throat. You want to say something. You want to do something. You can feel like you're not being possessed necessarily. You feel like you are being worn right now. But at this exact moment, <clears throat> you see. <clears throat> a group of individuals traveling down the street towards you as a line of those creatures begins to move towards you without needless to say these are geist goons these are grunts to you ace but to argos they're those inky beings again argos what do you do uh I'm first of all gonna get between them and Doctor. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. You place yourself there, and you sort of ready yourself. And did you actually hear a buzz in the distance? No, it's the brilliant clarion call of angelic wings, as something uh, parts the skyline. It travels in your direction. A large machine, Ace. That's a helicopter. And another. Ow. And another. And they travel towards you fast. Well. Okay. Alright. Uh, I see what's going on here. Um, <laughs> Argos. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you probably want to go that way. Yeah, take a step back. Let the experts handle it. <laughs> I don't need... <sighs> 
You're not even seeing what I'm seeing, man. <laughs> I, look, I'm, I'm seeing Geist goons and Geist helicopters. Even without knowing they're demons, I would do this. <laughs> Listen, have a little bit of faith in us, okay? At least this would Who even are you? <laughs> <laughs> call me a call me a fan. She blows a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> And you start to move off in this direction as you hear a as someone flies down the way and straight towards you. Cal pulls up again. You've been in this position before. The Akira slides. <laughs> the Akira slides, spins the bike. Is that a reference to something? <laughs> you wouldn't understand. <laughs> I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> I have no idea the significance of my actions. Hey, get on if you don't want to die. I don't. Did you get a phone call from your motorcycle? <laughs> Maybe. You hop on. Presumably the back. Oh. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no. I'll, I need that part to steer. As pff, the, the motorcycle begins to accelerate away, and Cal, you... Drive off into the distance, says Argos. You begin to listen, trying to focus in on the signal more. Dr. Sokova actually takes a step backwards and is like, I'm not particularly interested in getting arrested today. I mean, there's an ESP Corps officers over there in the bar. <clears throat> oh, so this is about to become an incident. I mean, like, you know, just some casual terrorism, probably. <laughs> you say, <laughs> as you and Seagazer prep yourselves, and hold on, let me grab the squad. And the real world, again, sets in around your vision. Hey, Ace, roll to die and then roll to do. I want to see how good you do on this. Boop. <clears throat> gonna back in yellow. Then I'm gonna roll to do. Whoop. One. Fuck. One. <laughs> we love to see it. Uh, you. God. Oh, hold on. Let me let me change the music. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Leave it to me. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me. Here, I'm about to absolutely get them with this next sequential one. Okay, that's like a number, but it's not great. Okay, Ace, let's coordinate on this. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> hey. You start to... Mm? Hey, guys, goons. They look at each other and then look at you. <laughs> you know what a Pope is? <laughs> <laughs> this one rushes you with uh, with a cudgel. The guy in the back begins to fire. You hear the roar of the helicopters in the distance. And she's like, <clears throat> oh, man. If they didn't have burn before, they're going to have a lot after this. Hey, stick me in the ground. <laughs> you spin the blade and slam it into the ground and almost from the back of it Seagazer begins to whir and a blur of astral sea stretches into the distance okay grab the dock and run <laughs> all right okay doctor if that's who you really are um <laughs> i'm a legally trained medical professional yes <laughs> all right uh, we're teleporting out of here later <laughs> You grab her and disappear as the entire area becomes almost soaked through. Uh, like individual droplets of Astral Sea burning away the tiles. The Geist goons roaring and yelling with an acidic hiss. However. Oh, I know how I'm going to do this, actually. Argos. Yes. You drive your way. Down a road. No. Good place to do it. <clears throat> Let me put you there. You two should be right there. You accelerate as it appears that a Geist barricade's been put in the way. Hold on, I'm still on the... Uh... Ooh. Oh, map. right, right. So, of course, of course. My own special Whoa. Argos vision map. Yeah, you got, you got sent to your Argos vision. There you go. Welcome to my mind palace. Okay. Do you see you and Cal? 
Uh, no, because I was dragging the screen while you centered me. Could you do it again, please? There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Ignore Cal's change of costume. <laughs> it's fine. It's to, it's to visually represent the fact that I have a motorcycle helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> the headband is the metaphor, you see. Uh, you begin to ex you begin to ex accelerate as you see out in front of you, Cal. A geist blockade. Argos, your mind almost tunnels in on whatever vision you need. You feel like you feel like you can hear a voice calling you. It it's as sweet as honey, almost as of spun gold. You can tell if he was calling you from someplace ahead. But for you. <clears throat> Recenter, and then The world presents itself very differently. Oh fuck! <laughs> oh, this is good. This this is the right way. Just uh, try to avoid the giant monsters. <laughs> cool. You work. You tell you what. You tell me about those, and I'll focus on the cards. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> You look over at the giant monsters. Helicopters wheel their way through the sky. Okay, so the two of you are going to give me a few coordinated actions. You are going to overcome each step of the barricade, giving me a sequence of four rolls. <clears throat> oh, good. Rolling numbers. Something Rolling numbers. I'm, so, I'm excellent at. Hey, Cal, I've got good news. Yes. A few acts have passed already. You can oh, start yourself yes. at three. Yay! I, my calculations were correct. So, uh, perfect. Cal, drive yourselves forward. I believe you should be able to highlight the entire squad and drag them. If you can, Fuck I can yes. move you. Not, I should be able to. Yep, we're good. Okay. You. You pull yourself forwards. Tell me, how are you going to deal with this helicopter as it cycles past you? Oh, we're going for the helicopters first. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, this brings back old times. <laughs> Those were terrifying, too. Okay, time for <laughs> evasive fucking maneuvers. He's gonna fucking reach into his kit, which we're just going to assume that the bike has some of. Yes. And he's gonna fucking throw some fucking... They're like... They are... They're, it's not a smoke bomb, but it's a bomb... It is a bomb that is meant to specifically fuck up optical sensors. Because Ooh, Cal's seeing helicopters, so he's responding to helicopters. It's Give like it, it basically looks like a shitload of glitter, but it'll fuck up any like automatic targeting systems on them. Give me a roll to do. It's like he's gonna tap his chest. Give me a hand, little man. Let's see, roll what to die. <laughs> <laughs> still wounded. <laughs> still wounded. <laughs> Different little man. Roll to do. Ah, that's about right. That's about that's right. A Give... Ten. That's, that's a, a ten. ten, baby. You barely skate back and forth as you weave between gunshots as you bounce up and over, and another helicopter flies past you. Uh, Argos, this one is your uh, your issue. Tell me, what do you do? Hey, Kel, what do you see that yep. as? That big monster to uh, our left. That that would be a helicopter. Do I want to know what you see it as? So. Nope. <laughs> Uh, cool. Arcos is going to summon Fate Weaver. Ooh, lovely! And shoot out some uh, some thread. Even though this thing looks like a giant demon monster, yeah. If it's a helicopter, maybe it'll get caught up in the rotors. It'll get completely tangled. Give me a roll to do. Lovely! You uh, start to wire it up and it drags you back a little bit at a time as uh, you can tell it's tangled and its limbs start to move and flail and almost glitch in place. Cal, this line of soldiers in front of you raises their guns. Uh, okay, he's gonna do a fucking... Uh... Okay, okay. Uh... Now, in the real world, there's like a vehicle here, right? Uh, yes, indeed. Okay, he's gonna do something fucking... He's he's gonna do motorcycle stunts, baby. He's gonna try and <laughs> ride off 
off the bar. He's gonna try and bounce over this thing again, go off the roof, and then just f hurtle over them. Oh, lovely. Okay, give me and a roll And hopefully to do. we don't both die. New. All right, new turn. So he gets to boost yes. up to four. He goes up to four. Dear God, please, Cal. <laughs> yeah! Number, baby! That's a 25. You accelerate as they shoot and you weave back and forth for a split second and you hit the front of this car, bounce and fly over this guy. Argos, oh, you're in midair from something that you did not see. And there are two of these demonic beings flanking you on either side. Last roll, how do you get out of this? Little thing about that cable trick there. I don't know what you're seeing, but I'm gonna assume it's still heavier than a motorcycle. <laughs> So, okay, you know, so careful with that. We're flying through the air. Yeah, you're hurtling through the air right now. All right. That was a cool stunt cam. We're, we're talking in slowed time now for dramatic effect. <laughs> uh... <laughs> talking to free action, don't question it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now to show you how I, I do this kind of thing. I'm going to summon single-handed savior as a rocket launcher <laughs> and rocket jump. <laughs> Give me a roll yes! to do. Give me a roll to do. Hey, cow, my, my, now might be a good time. <laughs> How many D... You know what? Have two D6, my guy! <laughs> All right, I can roll those. Too late. Oh! Yeah, good! Take yours! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you bounce on your wheel for a split second, and then you fire a shot at the back tire, and you do a complete flip through the air <laughs> as you wheel end over end uh, through the sky, flying forwards as you vroom, vroom. Boom, land, and almost in a peel of fire, skitter away, making your way down the highway. Blockade. Uh, Ace of Galatine ate your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> and you two. Oh, I wasn't streaming. Uh... <laughs> no one is going to believe. I'm sure it'll be on the news. <laughs> <laughs> you quietly register as your pair successfully makes its way out and away towards this noise Cal will you feel yourself you. drawn to. <laughs> Basil! <clears throat> yeah. It's time. <clears throat> you are waiting. Ooh, Roma, you here? I should ask. Very important. Ooh, did you just refuse the players? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. While we wait for Roma to get back, I'll set something up really quick. The sound of helicopters fades into the distance. So is now a good time to talk about our feelings? You know what? Yeah, man, go for it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I need Roma for both the other scenes. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so? How are things with you and Theo? <laughs> <laughs> uh... Like this. <laughs> That's how they are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I actually haven't seen her in a while. <laughs> but that's kind of to be expected with the situation. Hey, how's that been treating you? Uh, not great. I mean, we're going to save her soon, but it seems like she might be in trouble. Well, this has been a good heart-to-heart. <laughs> but, uh... You sort of travel away, keeping Theo in mind. 
Um, Where did you learn to drive? <laughs> like, positively, I'm asking that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could say the streets of New City, but the fact that that's actually the truth makes the line feel le somehow less satisfying to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And over here, from if you're here, Oh, Reed is waiting on me. I'm sorry. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, two people. Genuinely, it's chill. I forgot to give you the heads up. Uh, two people are chilling, waiting. Sir is getting his feedback looked at. She's standing there. She's doing like a little. Needs a Swiss. She's doing like a little jig. She's like mm. waving her arms back and forth and like tilting to the side. That's a. That looks like a dance of happiness. It's a dance of waiting. Oh, what are you waiting for? Uh, Saru. You know, there's other things. Like, that I should be waiting for? I mean, if you're waiting on one thing, why not explore what else the world has to offer? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. I just figured I would... Since he's going to be out soon, I would come here and wait for him to be out. Unless, of course, that was, in fact, a dance of happiness, in which case, continue to dance. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm having a good time. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> oh, four. Oh, four. You briefly consider, while you perform your dance of happiness, you briefly consider the environment as it surrounds. The world around, huh? You look around this area, and you, you haven't been not on a mission before. This is your first time just casually react relaxing, and the world seems so luminous, lively. The bushes yeah. shake. It's so full of life. It's so full of life. Something exits the bush bushes and thunks to the ground with a loud pfft. Uncle Raccoon? Around. Uh <laughs> Here's the boy stops in mid-motion. <laughs> mid <laughs> She runs up and hugs him. I was worried that you had perished. <laughs> okay, so we like this raccoon. <laughs> yeah, this one's our this one's a good one. It's sort of uh it sort of like receives the the hugs and the the tail <laughs> instinctively wraps around you. <laughs> See? Good raccoons. Um, is everything okay? I didn't know you were here see someone else approach immediately uh, uh, <laughs> fucking I mean, uh, tight behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Saru. Hey. You guys busy with, uh... Oh this my is... god. Wait a second. <laughs> this is her uncle. What? Oh. What? Oh, oh, there he goes. Oh, you spooked him. That's okay. Um, I'm just glad he's alive. Yeah, yeah uh... <sighs> glad you guys are doing good, too. Yeah, I was just waiting for Riddle to wake up. Well, uh, he sort of pauses and he's like, he stares at, uh, you all. Well, got out of my appointment, uh, probably Yeah, how's your eye? And, inop sort of inoperable, so they're gonna get me a new one. Oh, okay. Is, it, is that good? It's fine. <laughs> if it okay. makes you feel any better, you look really tough. Really? I imagine fish would be frightened by your visage. I don't need fish to fear me. <laughs> I mean, more than I already do. <laughs> <laughs> he stares into the distance. <laughs> so, what's your uncle doing here? I don't know. I was just asking him. It was going to be an exceptionally difficult ask because he doesn't speak speak all the time. <laughs> seems to be uh he he looks at you basil uh scratches the back of his head seems to remember what he was here for and he extends a hand palm up okay see you guys later <laughs> oh, he takes you, his hand. <laughs> you, you take you take the head he looks at you confused and he extends the other hand palm up 
And then he makes motions with his fingers, like, give me. All right. Want something? He wants something. What does he want? Everyone wants something. <laughs> wow. Uh, deeply insightful, genuinely. Do you, do you want my hat? <laughs> he looks at you, considering. <laughs> you get the feeling that that's not what he's here for, but he is considering taking the hat anyway. <laughs> it, was, it was your hat to begin with. I was merely borrowing it. Sort of, a, sort of looks around. Then he pats you on the head, securing the hat further. He sort of sniffs the air. Then he grabs you and he starts going in the direction. <laughs> we told you. <laughs> can we come? Can we come or no? I don't see why not. He didn't say anything to the contrary. You run off in a direction and eventually you're led. People start running, O4 starts running <laughs> like an animal. <laughs> Speaking of, all of all of you kind of are, except for the man who is literally turning into a fish. <laughs> That's, a fish is an animal. It is isn't. It's a greater being. <laughs> <laughs> a little pop-up in the corner of the screen. O4 has internalized this information. <laughs> Okay, so there's something in here that we need to take. <clears throat> oh, or find. She it seems to be sniffing kind of, uh, kind of everywhere. He's then eventually he turns, turns towards the north. You see his uh, his expression light up and just, poof, just fucking zooms in. <laughs> <laughs> you run up there and you come across. Verona talking into what appears to be a hollow display. So you're going to be taking your leave effective immediately? If if I'm allowed to, I, you, I do have vacation days. You do have vacation days. Again, congratulations. <laughs> and thank you. And um I'm just wondering if the world ends before vacation right. my vacation yeah. ends. Do I have to come back to work afterwards or if is it work like if work still exists extra dimensionally, then yes. Okay, understandable. No. Uh, it, we... it is in my contract. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. I. Uh, regardless, I'm happy for you. Enjoy the married life. Thank you. I, it said that the wisps don't actually believe in marriage, but I proved that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> I know what I want. I. You and I, Doctor. Exactly, yes. We're women who know what we want. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are. I'm Isabel. Have a good life. She puts a hand on your shoulder. <laughs> a hollow hand. <laughs> and puts a hand on the pristine one's shoulder. What the hell, Bruno? Who didn't notice you all enter the room? <laughs> oh, right. Of course. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Christine one puts Basil in front of him as a shield. <laughs> I am being used as a weapon of defense. <laughs> then over your shoulder, he does the same gesture he did to you to Verona. <laughs> um. Oh my god. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, okay, hold on. Uh, did you I've forget gotta... to pay him? No, 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 no. Uh, it's it's something with set up. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, I just gotta get in contact with Willow. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Um. <clears throat> oh, is this about what Willow said? Uh, yes. Uh, he needs he needs his medicine for the demons. Um, uh, 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 we've got other plans. Oh my God, we've got other plans. Uh, or other problems. Um, mm. what's the right, problem? Right. Uh, one second, one second. You've never seen Verona this panicked. Rushes into this room, rummage, rummage, rummage. Runs out with a crate, presents it to you. Okay, take this. Uh, there's more coming. This is all we can spare at the moment. Uh, why is he hiding from me? I, it doesn't matter. Uh, Willow just got her arm chopped off. What? Why? Oh. Willow just got her arm chopped off. Um, like I in real to, life? Uh, yeah, yes. I mean, in the VR simulation, but the VR simulation is a flame emulator. Her arm is gone. Uh, hold on a sec. Why are you panicking? You gave her a whole new body. I... Fair enough. I can calm down. Right, right, right. Sorry, I'm 
a little sensitive when it comes to Willow specifically. I... <sighs> Understandable. Yeah. Apparently you're a woman who knows who she wants. I saw... I was... I was there shortly after Willow's death. She was one of the first people under my care, so I'm... <laughs> okay, you're right. Thank you for helping me regain my cool. Willow's pretty tough. I don't think you have to worry so much. Yes, she'll be fine. Oh, oh but then you need to go take her, put her... Oh, her? yes, I need to give her a new... Oh, god damn it. She looks down at her hollow bed. Okay, I need to figure out how to get trouble a new arm, too. Oh. Oh my god. Uh, yes, uh, if, if, if he needs anything else, just give it to him. It's fine. I'll be right back. Verona rushes out with an arm. Did you hear that? Did you hear? Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Uncle Raccoon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting away from you all. <laughs> Crimes are being committed in opium. <laughs> For everyone else, this exact saga and the story of how this arm was lost, well, it's somewhat simple. They face down. The King of Knights herself. This pitched combat began with Mike and Willow holding the line. Within a matter of moments, however, this individual in front of them managed to decimate the front line, driving them backwards. They realized very quickly the potency of her ability to link it in chat. Dismemberment. If you deal 20 or more damage in a single attack, you dismember the target, removing a limb. One of the first actions of the combat, she raised her blade high and removed one of Willow's arms. Willow loudly proclaimed, if you would, for the purposes of recreation. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you cut off both my arms, I'll just use my teeth. <laughs> no, Willow, don't say that. You're just telling her where to aim. To reveal her other ability, Helm Splitter. As she builds up a special mechanic, she, her base damage increases to 20, and she adds 66 extra damage. If the attack, uh, if the damage dealt in a single attack exceeds, uh, 40, she simply beheads the target. The fight continued as treble songs managed to support the entire group. Willow keeping hold of the King of Knights while the rest of them performed attack after attack against her great body. When she took her first wound, or was perceived to... Instead of going down, she used the ability Battle Cry. When your health hits zero, return to 99 HP and take one additional turn per act. She rose to the, uh, the height of her strength once more. Raising her blade aloft, she began to use an ability that would slowly gather power. Light of the world's uh, uh, destruction. At the end of the act, she would strike the battlefield, dealing well over 99 damage, instantly wounding everybody involved. To prevent this, what did you do, Willow? I made a plan with Ruth. Yeah! <laughs> and Mike. Yeah! <laughs> In that yeah. one second, I'd get Ruth to call down a meteor. <laughs> and I'd grab the King of Knights and toss her into the air. One arm. With my with one, one arm. remaining arm. Barely succeeding, Willow tossed the King of Knights into the sky. She flew up and Mike ducked down, ignited her wings, and grabbed the king. The meteor was set to arrive in three turns. Willow threw her into the air, bringing her one turn closer. And then Mike grabbed her and flew her directly into the streaking meteor, KOing herself instantly, but breaking the King of Knights' attack. She slammed into the roof of this building temporarily stunned. In this moment, everyone jumped her, performing attack after attack while they could. And that is when they drove her to the edge of her first wound. The point that grasped the earth fell off, and he whispered something at that time. Well, now all you have to do is survive the attack that killed me. 
Kingdom of One activated. Upon taking a wound, perform six sequential attacks, each failed attack gaining a stack of Seal of Arms. If any of these attacks wounds the target, add three additional attacks to this onslaught. In this split second, all of the squad gathered together, grasping the Sword of Hope. The Sword of Hope having an ability to choose exactly who these attacks go off against. So in this moment, they needed to split damage perfectly, but in order to do that, one would have to admit that they were Ruth's friend. Grillo in this moment decided to put her own pride aside and patted Ruth one on, once on the head, gaining Bond 1 and the ability to tank damage with everyone else. They danced back and forth, moving between the King of Knights' attacks. And it was at this point that Willow put herself in the line of fire. The GM whispered, all you have to do is pray she doesn't crit and you'll be fine. Naturally, a split second, uh, a split second later, Willow's arm went flying through the air. But a slight miscalculation. Trouble's Song of Defense actually provided her with just enough survival to keep her arm uh, mostly attached. Trouble, on the other hand, met with a blow that caused her arm to fly free. And nearly, again, she lost the other. Using a proper combination of the block ability, they were able to soak exactly enough damage to survive an onslaught. The King of Knights only wounding them one time and getting three additional attacks. As this onslaught drew itself to a close, she grew quiet and stared at Willow, an acknowledgement of the backstory that Willow was embodying at the time. For her, she perceived you as a bread thief from a nearby port that she once engaged with. And yet, you raised to the absolute pinnacle at this moment to bring the King of Knights toppling down from her castle. And... I love that we took all those wounds, lost two of our arms, and did all that stuff, brought her to one wound. Yep. <laughs> you all you all went through it and uh basically gathered up uh the squad had a moment of mutual appreciation of your combined talents your ability is proving themselves to be quite useful riddle and verona rushed into the room to uh address your wounds and the plan was set the next world was prepared this one world four coming face to face an inquisitor but in this instance trouble and willow did get their arms back just so you know trouble and willow did get their <laughs> arms repaired yes they are uh not perfectly fit but they they should carry them through these encounters. temporary arms were attached <laughs> yes <clears throat> in their place We will actually play, Tiny, if you're cool with it, a truncated version of what happened here. Yeah. <clears throat> World 4 flares to life around you. What echoes around is an almost arched cathedral. It feels like a proper hybrid between a crypt and some place of great religious worship. As your eyes open, you feel flame bind to the exterior of your body, almost building up like scabs and binding inwards. A figure towers over uh, you. A tinkling of a bell can be heard. Oh, damn it. Um, it seems to have worked. Looks down. You're moving, so good luck. If you survive, we can talk on the other side of this. The jingling grows louder as the man draws himself up, a robed figure. He runs his way down the hallway and disappears. And Willow, your body <sighs> rises and groans together. Your flesh feels strange. Willow looks at her hands. Long pointed fingers. A voice chimes in your ear. Your only objective this time is to live longer than I did. 
When the Inquisitors found me, they ripped me to shreds. There's something unique about this body, this time. It wasn't like I was working together with a partner. This was me, all the way through. Good luck. You open and close your hands. It feels so strange. Your body, I'm gonna link the effect. Demonic possession. You're consistently losing life. You need to consume other sources of flame to remain physically stable. Regularly roll the demonic possession setting to determine how well you're holding together. You ugh, pulled yourself free of the dais and you felt the hunger run through your body. Endless. Almost surging against the back of your mind. This is horrible. The flesh that seems to move around you almost feels alien. It starts to whisper, but you suppress it. It starts to speak up, but those voices die down. Your flame flares and you remain coherent. You remain sane. You wander through this cathedral and you see large towering structures dedicated to different demonic shapes. And you make it over here. And who comes to mind in this moment, Willow? I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I need to eat some flame. <laughs> you arc your heart back. Just like your good pal Ace Galatine, drive it forwards and shatter this vase. Feeling a rivulets of flame dance up your arm, you feel re-energized. Your body can carry on a little while longer. You move yourself forwards as the whispering grows quiet again. And you see someone nearby chained up, sitting on the ground. 50% chance of badger. <laughs> she... <laughs> Her eyes light up. Oh, uh, Willow, is that you? Mark, I'm a demon. I, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I tried to break out a few times, but this chain's doing something weird. It's like it's siphoning my flame. She points over at the door nearby. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I banish you to the door. <laughs> I can make it past. Um, I tried to break myself free. That door over there is sealed and I can't do anything about this. Don't worry, I, I think I got this. You reach down and grr, lock your fingers around it and yank and simply rip the chain out of the wall. And with it comes a ball almost wrapped in cloth. Patricia's of bones stick out of the sides. And Willow, for a crit 20 at this time, deduces that this is either the remains of or once was a human. Mike and her shared a look of utter repulsion. What the hell? This is, this is messed up, Mike. Your voice speaks up again, whispers traveling through the armor. What does the demon say to you in this moment? It whispers in your ears, afraid, 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 afraid. You feel fear shake your entire body as you start to travel in this direction, and Mike sort of, like, looks back. She's thinking really hard. Your body in the way it is. Um, you're hosting a reflection now, right? Yeah, but... The, these demons are just as scary as the people here. She pauses. And then... You see her cogitate something in her head as, almost naturally drawn, you moved around this corner and moved into a nearby room. Inside here, a large coffin stood on the far side of the chamber as traveled inside. You heard someone lightly cursing from the interior. Damn it. 
have to do this one more freaking time. <laughs> Trouble? Is that you? There's not an active response for a little bit before she goes. Willow Mike, is that you? Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, you moved over and <laughs> pulled her free from what appeared to be this large standing coffin. You okay? This is annoying. Yeah. People here are really messed up. Oh, yeah. Well, no, World Floor was pretty bad. I was talking about the other thing. Oh. Oh. Um. I. So. Based on the records, this is like a demonologist building, right? Mm. The demonologist did a lot of stuff like this. There's a reason why I selected somebody who was. I suppose on the enemy team. You didn't. Right! Yeah. Didn't side with the demonologists, huh? No, they're gross. <laughs> <laughs> Mike looks over to Willow like. Hmm. Yeah. And your trio back outside. As. Doink, doink. Mike sort of travels ahead. Hey, um... Willow's like, uh... She's like a demonic body with a reflection. That shouldn't be possible, right? Hmm. Trouble sort of looks Willow over, listens. Bas she's, she's getting interested. She's like, well... Theoretically, no. Elements... Well, reflections bind to both flame and elements, so she shouldn't be able to unless somehow they imbued her with flame. Then she wouldn't be a demon anymore. And that's when you came to the conclusion. The flame that's whirling around inside this armor is likely suppressing whatever the demonic body is. It is... There are two beings in there. One is Grasp, slash Willow, and the other is the demon that is and, terrified. <laughs> and we're currently, you're currently suppressing their will. Mm. It's the beings of flame and demon burn perception cycle, but enforced on one body. You worked your way down around this corner. Where you found your two other companions working on the doorway to an office of a D. Vortigern. Trouble, as soon as the name D. Vortigern appeared, uh, like was stated, uh, broke composure pretty bad <laughs> and immediately pushed everyone out of the way and tried to manually break into the office by summoning one of her reflections. <clears throat> she stabbed at it repeatedly while Willow raised a hand helpfully and offered to instead to tell me, what did you do? Oh, I, I could just use keyhole and find a moment where the Inquisitors didn't come and this door was open. The Inquisitor raid on the base was temporarily delayed and instead... What happened was, uh, the simulation glitched for a moment, while Cast cursed you out, everything glitched, the door slid open, and you saw the man in question appear almost out of thin air, and he started to walk off in this direction, trouble giving immediate chase. The second she rounded the corner, he began a full-on sprint. He made his way over here, and Treble, Treble gave pursuit, and Willow, you had a split second of considering what you were going to do, but Mike caught up and offered in this moment to be your beetle. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you hopped on her back and boom, landed driving the man to the ground. Treble caught up, and Willow and the pair Stumbled off in this direction. Trouble, do you remember what you did? Once they go to the next area? 
No, right here, right, right now. now. You had a contingency plan if Willow stuck her arm in the air. Oh, right. After <laughs> Willow's arm got cut off, they rewired her new arm so that Treble could strike Willow with lightning without destroying her body. So Treble began striking Willow with lightning while she was holding this man, thus striking him <laughs> with lightning. The two wound up glitching out of reality and jumping instead ahead in the simulation. Willow, you remained attached to the man. Do you remember how it felt? Willow was angry. She felt the fear in the demon inside of her and, and lashed out at the doctor. You, why you why did you make me? <laughs> you drove your claws in again and again and again while Treble warped everyone outside. The Inquisition closing in on the area, firing their crossbows upwards. Uh, Grillo managed to detach you from the doctor while everyone had a chance to stop Treble from doing this. They chose not to. <laughs> Treble uh, walks over to D. Vortigern, hero of World 4. And starts stomping his throat in. <laughs> <laughs> they, she just starts stomping while the rest of everyone started to sprint their way across the rooftops of the city. You made it to about here before they started firing on you. And Willow, what did you do? I went into demon mode and started catching arrows out of the air. <laughs> you started catching arrows out of the air while everyone gave you approving cheers. Your quartet danced across the top of the roof, landed and rushed off into the Clockwork City, finding a fate that Grasp never experienced. What followed shortly afterwards was, well... You immediately traveled from one gauntlet to the next. And there, you, um, you experienced the joys of World 3. But, back in the VR hall. Trouble. All right. <laughs> They're staring at you. This is, <laughs> this is after the World 3 one, right? Just after World 3, they're staring at you. World 3 has just completed. They walk yep. out of the simulation and she goes, We're never talking about that again. Why not? You were so cool. It was really nice. It was really pretty. Listen, you can like it all you want. Just, we are never talking about it again. It doesn't leave this room. They look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Yes, I am quite positive, actually. Okay. We will respect your decision. I guess. But just... For the record, I did. I do not think you were cringe. Yeah, no, that was actually cool. I don't think there was any cringe whatsoever. And you can trust Ruth on cringe. <laughs> Tee hee, wait. <laughs> 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 she just cringes full body. <laughs> you guys did great. You guys did great. You I guys did really good. I kind of like singing. I'm yeah. glad. You both did better than I expected. I didn't expect you to have such impressive performance, Willow. Yeah, me neither. I just kind of <laughs> just started singing. And right then. Okay, everyone. You ready for the final test? Uh, back over here. Grilla, like, if it's as difficult as the last one, no, but I'm going to do my best anyway. Do we know what type of test it is? Uh, this one, the one we just completed, was for World 3. She sort of turns I to grasp. Borrow you for a sec. Of course. Leads you over and conspiratorially begins to whisper. And over here, these guys are like, okay. So this is like the last seal to like undo what's what's messed up with Grasp or something? No, it's to drive Grasp even to the next level. Even further beyond, Mike. Okay. Um, good luck, Willow. I think you've got this. Yep. Once, once we get past this, I'll be stronger than I've ever been before. 
Uh, you're passing me up, jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I gotta be a rising star. <laughs> and at this exact point, so you understand? I understand why you had me accompany her now. She's gotta discover this for herself. It makes sense. I'm a full archive of all of the... Yeah, no. I'm... The, a pretty perfect missing link here. To help fill in the gaps. Are you sure she'll be able to figure it out? Yeah. I trust her. She'll okay. figure it out or die trying. <laughs> he walks his way back over. He's like, Willow, you ready? <laughs> yep. I'm ready to take on any challenge. It will be a little difficult for me to assist you with this one. Oh, are you, you going to be sitting this one out? No, I will be there, but it will be a little difficult. Mike, you need to be careful as well. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah of course. That's all um, I have to say. Okay, uh, you can trust us. Um, I'm going to move everybody over. Uh, cast like, okay, simulation start. Good luck, everyone. Put you on this map. What you see around here is what appears to be a brilliant autumn. It's not, um, it's not as destroyed or dilapidated as you expected. You're traveling before World 3, right? So, like, there are expectations for what the world might look like. This means none of them. This place is somewhat beautiful. Picturesque, even. You, the surrounding area, and you hear a crunch as someone disturbs the sand in front of you. See a man quietly step towards you, holding his sword. Willow, you recognize him almost immediately. This is Graham. This is the leader of Exulansis. He takes another step forwards. Trouble speaks up. I will do my best to tank the hits for you. I wasn't there last time this happened. And then something starts to shake in his body. But then something's off. As he starts to change in front of your eyes, and what flares up around him is a pitch black suit of armor that seems to rest heavily on him. And he almost ducks over and seems to assume a bestial stance. The and... only thing I can tell you is that's not the Graham that I know. He starts to move and sway and then leaps to the side, disappearing. Gra Grasp uh, whispers in your ear. Your job isn't just to win this time with your fists. It's to figure out why I'm showing you this. Try to understand the significance of what the name Grasp the Earth means. You hear something rummage around in the darkness, disrupting leaf after leaf. It bounces through the air. Use your mind. The second you put it together, you'll gain strength that nobody can compare to. All right. She focuses up. <clears throat> So, Willow, here's how this is going to go. At the start of every single act, Treble is going to provide you a hint, and I am going to ask you a question. The second you find the answer, Grasp will evolve. I will start at the very beginning. No hints yet, Treble. Um, of why is he showing you this? This fight. Why is this the level that you will break through on? Oh. This fight specifically. This fight specifically. Oh man, I don't even... <laughs> this is... You this don't need is... to know right this moment. Every yeah. turn you'll get, you'll get a little closer. Every you single actually, time. 
you actually see trouble. That sword that she pulled out during the hex fight, that reflection, that long purple, that long white sword with purple iridescent flecks all over it. Her reflection, spit and wishes. She summons it to her side and she gets ready to help defend you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Willow, are you going to choose to answer this time? You can hold it until the end of the act. I get to answer, make, uh, make an answer act. once per act. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think I'll hold it till the end of this act. Lovely. Okay, I'm gonna roll for him. Uh, give me your give me your roll to die, uh, Willow. All right. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. He is going to lock up move his entire body and then jumping almost like a beast he's going to try to close the distance and willow in an instant he is on you trouble give me a roll to die okay tell me what you're locking in god which of these dice does she lock in it's her clear <clears throat> you lock in your clear and you you hold the blade up, and you manage to stop him an inch from your face. Willow, you get a closer look at this guy. Give me a roll to do. All right. What Trouble said earlier, ping, he lands backwards and almost, like, arches backwards, climbing up this uh, large protrusion of metal. What, uh, what Trouble said earlier, this isn't the Graham that she knows. Almost seems correct. You got a good view of him. This is a person powered by... This is a person powered by flame, maybe? His armor, his exterior seems to be controlled by it, but he's not moving in the same way. He climbs up to the top of this. It's your go. It, it reminds me of World 4, where a, a demon was in the same body as Grasp. Ooh, interesting. Ah. Uh. I'm not sure. You're not certain yet. You have no choice but to simply act. <laughs> it's okay. We're here to help buy you time to figure it out. Y yeah. I'm used to fighting Graham, I guess. Maybe not this Graham, but I could do it again. Don't worry about it. I guess my first guess is that you're showing me a fight where um they someone couldn't i don't know ground themselves interesting nah not quite <laughs> true but that's not the point <laughs> he smiles <laughs> and you feel you feel this moment as mike juts forward and she's going to try to She's going to try to strike the base of the tower as Graham leaps in the air and touches down. Uh, Ruth is similarly going to rush in, try to strike at the man, and he will... Boink, boink. He leaps his way up and over and is on you again, Willow. Willow, give me a roll to die. All right. Lovely. And he will... What to do? He jumps, leaps, grabs, and forces you to the ground. He drags you across the ground. Give me a roll to do to gain information. Oh, damn, Willow. Okay, okay. So, first of all, I'm going to ping you for damage. Uh, minus 13. As you're dragged backwards, treble, you whirl around as this almost bestial shape forces Willow backwards, and you see something. The person that's under this mask, they're undoubtedly human. And let me... There you go. Uh, you... He... You roll backwards and almost reset yourself. Grillo's going to take a shot at his back. Uh, the man raises his sword and easily blocks it. He holds you in one arm. Stun of a new act. Treble, hint away. Uh, sorry, I would give you more advice on his fighting style, but this one's fighting style is completely different. I'm <laughs> not going to be much help here. <clears throat> Mike. It's, it's all right. <laughs> Mike is actually going to think to herself. She's like, wait a second. Hold on. She thinks... Uh, Willow. Yeah? Where do you think we are right now? Uh, I don't know. World, like, one? Sure. Uh, 
Uh, Mike actually looks at you and then looks at Trouble. Doesn't that contradict something that she just said? You look at Trouble, the pained look in her face. This isn't the gram she knows. What could that mean? There... There is a uniting factor here. I've been to all of the places that Grasp is showing us. Graham only existed in, well, as far as we know, World One, right? So who is this? Why is he here? How is this possible? Mike says with a smile. <laughs> Trouble kind of gets a weak little smile. I mean, I was born in World Three. Hmm. So this is uh, a different Graham reincarnated. She, uh, you feel like. Yeah, this is the right assumption. Now, what does that mean? You feel like you've actually got it on the tip of your tongue. So what this place? It's an old place. Oh, baby! You reach your hand out as you realize something. You came to a conclusion. It seems so natural. The gram that was standing in front of you. World one, right? This place. It's an old place. The body reels against you and forces you backwards. This place is much older than that, though. Right? And you look over at Grasp, and he sits and watches. <laughs> yeah, right on the money. Why would I want to show you something older than World One? This is the Earth you're talking about. He beams at you. <laughs> he beams at you as you feel. You feel grasp of the Earth, holding on to this individual, start to surge with power. Yeah. That's what I am. A line connecting something ancient to you. Seen a lot of things, but... That individual, he's only existed once in the burning world, right? It only follows that he's something much older. So, I want you to trace this history back. Understand just how deep these roots grow. And, Willow, give me a roll to do. All right. You stance yourself up and your body almost connects downwards and you start to connect with everything that came before. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the first. You... Every single earth. The veins oh. of the world that reach down for, for each and for each world, each wielder. You reach out and drive the vein downwards. The purpose of this lesson fully and perfectly conveyed. You go back and back and back and your vision doesn't just see the burning world. Your vision traces the coda backwards and it assumes an odd right angle and it drives straight down into this gram. The one that you're witnessing right now as your vision, your version of perceived history literally smashes away between, uh, beneath the weight of your fist. Everything cracks into a more complex world, one that functioned differently, a world where war was waged against great mechanical beings. And then that vision cracks again. Everything becomes significantly more insectoid, large towering computer spires, mechanical crabs as far as the eye can see, a brilliant world that burns away and away and away and away and... You see it, a single mode of light. You hold it in your hand. The place that he originally came from. One of the oldest reflections. A gift carried by you. A hope from past to present. 
VR chamber slowly activates. You stand there, quietly waiting, as thoughts almost cascade through your mind. <laughs> yeah, so that's our legacy. It's functionally the legacy of every single reflection, but I guess good job reaching it on your own. Every single life we've fought in, every single world we've moved through. That's another tale that you're carrying with you. Not just carrying your own weight, carrying all of our little weight. Every single legend, every single experience, from the dawn of time till now, it's all been for this exact moment. He puts his hands on your shoulders, and I'm so damn proud of you. <laughs> he, he offers a light smile. <laughs> this moment you almost feel a sense of like calm peace travel through not only grasp but your body it's strange willow and those experiences you just went through those people went to their deaths one after the other yet there was calm there because there was an understanding it was something that you said earlier another link in the chain right You'd be right in there with them, but more correctly, inversing it, they're fighting alongside you, even now. Grasp takes a step backwards. <laughs> I don't have anything more that I can teach you. You got full mastery over that thing. So next, we gotta figure out what the next step is. Holy crap. It's yeah, Trouble hell? comes, Kevin, trouble comes <laughs> trotting over, grabs you by by the face with both of her hands and goes, oh my god, Willow, you did so good. <laughs> <laughs> Willow is like a little teary-eyed and wipes her uh, her tears a little bit. I see. So every time I stand stuck, I was connected with every single other wielder. He's all standing with me. You see Grasp actually, like, similarly wipe one of the tears from his eyes. Finally, one of them spilling over. He's like, yeah, that's my wielder. You get it. <laughs> <laughs> Might of the Earth, still carried with you. He, like, looks over at Ruth and he's like, that should put you on even ground or even beyond the sort of hopes wielder. So why don't you show her what for? <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike sort of smiles and she's like, Willa, that was really incredible. Uh, Grillo over here is like, yeah, you're kind of lucky not only that you have a reflection, but that it's a good one. I mean, you can have a reflection too if you want. Oh, uh, fun. Perfect yeah, segue. actually. <laughs> sorry, I got, sorry, I got a little distracted. Uh, she should be here. Uh door sort of slides open as <laughs> person runs in. Hey! <clears throat> and you hear Cass like chime in over the line like <clears throat> uh, alright, you guys should be good. Uh, Grillo, you've been cleared if you wanna if, uh, Willow, your request? We got approval. What? Nice! <laughs> <laughs> What what is happening? <laughs> Congratulations. Um what? You've been cleared. You have clearance to uh, go up to the reflection hall and get a reflection if you need it. She points at herself, me. Yes. Congratulations, Mike Claps. Congrats, yeah. hello. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this happening? <laughs> Man. You finish mastering your own and you're on to somebody else. Good luck with her. I think she'll be significantly more stubborn. <laughs> Don't worry, she's a she's an honorary wisp. She's <laughs> tough as nails. <laughs> yeah. Uh Mike's like, hey, mind if I come with? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh Riddle like Riddle moves over and she's like, hey, um Question, and then door sort of slides open. <sighs> hey! Um, question, everyone. What, what happened? What happened to that uh, World Three recording? It doesn't exist anymore. 
What do you mean it doesn't exist anymore? It doesn't exist anymore. What do you mean it doesn't exist anymore? I wanted to see! I already deleted all of them. Yeah, Verona. I don't know. Aren't you being like... I think you're being a little severe about this. It's fine. Tribble's allowed to have secrets. Riddle, you're awfully calm about this. You already saved a copy, didn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> she, like, lightly stops. Meanwhile, Grillo in the background is like, fine, fine. She, what direction? Where are we going? <laughs> well, look, let me lead you. Let me lead you. Come on. You don't have to, you don't have to barge through people or anything. <clears throat> they start to walk off in this direction as trouble. You receive another call on your comms after, uh, the mid in the midst of a very busy night. What? what? Uh, you see it. Possession alarm, this area, Argos. Uh, uh I... <laughs> she, she looks like Willow and Grillo leaving. What, wanted to go with them, but she's like, I actually think I need to go do something. Uh, okay. Uh, good luck. Riddle? Yeah? It's fine if you have it, but don't give any copies to anyone else. Oh, okay. <laughs> My just, guys... Oh, it's... <laughs> oh, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it just she, works. She the, she'll send the message to Mike. Mike, I assume you'll handle this. Mike, like, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> It'll be okay. Mike sort of looks over and... Trouble, you disappear. And we are going to catch up with our good friend Arc Nasty. <laughs> you guys get the arg nasty after that shit? You, you get the arg nasty after this shit. Dude, Willow, that was sick as hell, man. <laughs> oh my god, when you said human, I was like, oh, I see. I get <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm only gonna give you this hint if you roll absurdly high. Rolls absurdly <laughs> high, okay. <laughs> um, let me Grasp, go to... like, yeah, bring trouble. Trouble who's... ESP makes her a catalog of every world that she's ever been to. The only worlds that she's been to outside of the burning world is the world where that existed. Trouble. Oh, I get it. <laughs> this is why you wanted me to be here to be the head system. Yep. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna drop a Cal and an Argos. So, Cal, you functionally drop Argos off here. <laughs> and we're still alive. How's that for the power of positive thinking? <laughs> wow. That, that that was some great driving. Thank you. He salutes. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're done yet, uh, so I'm going to keep leading him off this way. You're going to be okay from here? Uh, sure hope so. But I'll call you if I need a dramatic rescue again. It's a bit, it's the what motorcycles specialize in. <laughs> hey, we haven't had a lot of chance to talk lately, but there's something I wanted to say. Yeah. You should be a little more selfish. Selfish. Listen, I asked you how you were doing, and you told me how how unfortunate it was that Theo's in trouble. You got feelings too, man. Don't keep putting them on the shelf for other people. Or you're gonna wind up looking back and regretting the things you didn't do. The people around you like you because of who you are. So don't be afraid to be that person, okay? Coming from someone who cares about you. Just gonna walk over and give Cal a quick hug. <laughs> Cal's gonna hug you back. He's good at hugs. <laughs> Try my best. That's all anybody can do. You're gonna do great, man. All right, I should get out of here before those sirens catch up. <laughs> all right. Good luck. Be safe. Be safe, man. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Gives you yeah. a wave as he rides off again 
Cal takes off, light slowly mixing into the dark as, of course, Argos, that isn't what you were seeing at all, but that's fine. That's fine. This is fine. <laughs> the area ahead appears to be, well, it's a back alleyway for sure. Yeah. Okay. Guess I'll just keep wandering this way, trying to hear that voice. You keep trying to hear. Has it gotten any louder? It has, substantially. It sounds like it's Fio's voice. I'm gonna try and call out to it, both <laughs> in my head and from my mouth. Uh, give me a roll to Fio? You call Fio's name. Sorry, what did you say before that? Uh, give me a roll to do. Oh, okay. You call Fio's name. Your consciousness resumes and you're over here. <laughs> it feels like you're heading towards something. Hmm. That's, uh... It must have hit the fast travel button there. <laughs> um... <laughs> hmm. I'll continue walking in this direction, then. That seems... good. You keep walking as the whispers sort of, like, grow around you. The alleyway almost contorts, and you feel that same amount of burn, like, sort of pick up around your temples. As you travel, it almost... Give me another roll to do. It feels like for a split second, someone tries to push you away desperately. In fact, it's the moment that you make it here. It feels almost like the crate is looking down at you and it's trying to put, the gold is trying to push you back. The gold is desperately trying to push you back, but you squeeze through and you find yourself up here and you're like, oh, oh. it feels like you're being yanked along. I don't know what to make of this, but. I use Fate Weaver to try and contact Theo. Yes, absolutely. Give me a roll to do. You, the string flies out and it yanks and with a nine, you get yanked like a fishing line. Mm -hmm. Forward, forward, forward. The weight in your body. God, it's so fucking loud here. And you make your way over here. You said you sent out Fate Weaver, right? Mm-hmm. That makes all of this very simple, actually. Uh, Fate Weaver is stuck in something in the junk pile. And what you see there is, um... You don't know what your mind expects. Fio's last hope? Maybe it's a super weapon or, like, some last trick that's up her sleeve. But... It sticks into this pile, and what you feel and what you see isn't a super weapon at all. What you see is actually a large robotic body sort of, like, braced up against uh, a throne of garbage. Uh, bits of it, like, broken, sort of, like, cracked, torn away. And you said you used Fate Weaver. So it digs into the sky. Or, it's uh, into the sky, Jesus, this guy. And, um... It, uh, almost intuitively starts to transmit bits of its memory to you. You feel a flood of emotion. Overwhelming. Do you cut off Fate Weaver or leave it? No, I'm gonna leave it and power through it. See what's going on. When you came to Opia, you were introduced to a few individuals known as Artificial Intelligences. Little robotic life forms meant to act and support as not only companions, but crucial members of Opia's team. Something sticks on the side of your head as you watch someone else admire a pile of junk in front of herself. She slowly kicks her feet as each of them assumes a proper shape Boom. 
little machines, utterly deprived of flame. She hops down and sort of stands in the middle of them and is like, <clears throat> Greetings! I am your pyromancer. I'm the pyromancer of instrumentality. Theo, it's a pleasure to meet you all. <laughs> they all thunk over. There's an upsetting brrrr as the entire derelict seems to shift slightly as power is reapportioned for this area. Somebody runs down. <laughs> uh, Theo, um, what appears to be wrong? Oh, uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing. Uh, you're... Right. We modeled these ones, of course. <laughs> he sort of moves over and sort of, like, starts to pick them up. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> Genuinely, really am. It's fine. It's okay. Picks them up one by one. Hey, won't be too bad once we're on the other side of this world and flame is flowing again properly. We'll probably have enough left over to get your friends back online. He, like, moves over and pats her on the shoulder once. He doesn't understand what she sees in these things, but for his daughter, hey, it might be worth a shot. Um, she's like, yeah, of course. Um, so, don't try to siphon away flame for this the queen will get mad right of course he uh sort of like nods if you need anything of course i'm always just a call away sort of a he plops down in the middle of the room and for a split second one of them <laughs> seems to take on shape and it moves its way back over to her and lightly perches on her before Thump. The robot rolls down completely inert again. Theo looks at each of these little constructions arranged in front of her. Sort of quietly sighs. She feels the weight of this place set in a little bit more. There's always one problem, though. She made these things. So that she would have something to talk to. And she swore... Regardless of what anyone else said, they had little personalities of their own. It wasn't something that would necessarily come out while the others were present, but these tiny little beings, when imbued with flame, almost expressed themselves. They moved around. They were friends for a person who never knew anything. And there was always one that was missing very first design. The hope of a very lonely girl that someday, maybe, she would find a friend. To her, that person, she gave a nickname. The Hero. Your vision returns to yourself as you stare at the end of this hallway at the large figure hanging in the pile of junk in front of you. You can tell how far this being has come. Pop over here. Gonna check for any signs of, maybe not life, but <clears throat> if it's active. You check for activity, and as you do, allow me to move you over to the proper version. You feel the possession almost fade. Oh, thank God. It's like a head cold passes as the real normal world almost comes back to you. It doesn't seem to be really functional. Seems like it ran out of power. Huh. Well, I'll... Can I use Fate Weaver to channel some of my own flame into... it? Absolutely. 
by the same connection, you did the same thing, and this figure boom, jumps up, and boom, the eyes flare on, one after the other. And this large, towering figure actually looks down at you and sees you. It's head looks at the connection, makes this expression, and pats you on both shoulders. And oh. Exactly this point. Boom. Someone warps in. Just a flash of light that honestly startles the crap out of both of you. You notice this guy. Uh, he like gets in the way. <laughs> oh, oh Marcus, I was. Uh, oh, it's you. Hey, Treble. Hi, I saw that you were. You're, you, I got pinged that you were possessed, and it seems you're in the middle of something. Uh, Uno? Treble kind of does a yeah. curtsy to Uno. Uno takes a step backwards and sort of like smiles back and nods. <laughs> You're one of Theo's friends, right? She like uh, looks over at Argos, sort of thinks, smiles, and nods. Yeah. Looks, looks down at Argos and pats you on the back repeatedly. Uh, yeah, I... I was possessed, sort of, and... Looking for Theo's last hope and wound up finding, oh. <laughs> well, you. <laughs> that makes sense. She gets like a small little smile. It, it does. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess uh, for. Do you. She turns towards Uno. Do you want to explain? Should I explain? I can explain. He holds his hand out and then, like, almost asks for Fate Weaver's tie again. Oh, yeah. Sure. Bzzz. You connect yourself to the large, towering robot, and um, he, he sort of beams, like, looking down at you. And um, the thought that he spreads is very straightforward. <sighs> Nothing complex, no plan, no nothing. It's just a very simple wish. A very simple desire, and a simple feeling of gratitude that flows from him to you. Theo finally found a friend. Oh. <laughs> he looks at you. Man. He smiles. Okay, well, we gotta save her. Nice. If Fia is calling you back, it's probably for something serious, right? She says, like, looking over towards Uno. Uno looks at you, and then looks at Argos, and then actually nods a little solemnly. Argos, Do you um... know what's happening? He sort of, like... He actually gets a uh, an expression on his face, and um, he, like, smiles and nods a little lightly. Can you tell me? He, um, he points to the Fate Weaver cord again. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you feel a connection between the two of you. Uh, you get something very simple beamed from his mind to yours. That possession effect that you are under is something that he's been swimming through his entire time up here. It's been brutal and bad and overwhelming. It has been non-stop. Every single instrumentality demon operates under those effects. They are experiencing that 24-7 and are chained to the wills of others. He actually gets a big beaming smile and then motions to himself. He ran out of power. He collapsed out here, but it seems uh, his flame-based systems all simply shut down. It freed him from possession. At least for now, it seems like he's coherent. Mm. That's good. Yeah. He, uh, he sort of like does actually seem a little surprised as he tilts his head and he then smiles. Um, 
He points to himself and then makes a gesture of up repeatedly and shows it to Treble and then, like, he tries to communicate something to you. A long time ago, when the flame was running low, all of his brethren gave them all that they had, just enough to maybe make it to the surface. He Theo, then... You go. Theo actually had several friends of a similar nature, but the derelict flame is sort of short. And she explained to me once that in an attempt to save one of them, they gave all of their flame to him and sent him away in the hopes that he would be free. And now she's asking him for help. It must be pretty serious. Oh, man. If Willow was here, she'd say something like, you're carrying on their hopes and dreams. And I'd probably agree. Oh, no! You actually... God, if this robot could cry! <laughs> <laughs> His expression sort of falls. And he, um... Oh, God. He... Oh, boy, oh, boy. Um... This is fun. Uh, I didn't expect this to happen in this order. This is wonderful. He holds his hands out, one for each of you. He gestures to your fate weaver and your like listen. She nods. Mm -hmm. He smiles and attempts to convey to you the message that Theo was attempting to send. Silence reigns for a split second. It's almost uh <clears throat> It's almost perfectly silent, but you hear the slight crackle almost of a recording. You hear someone make an announcement. Oh, it's pitch black. Don't worry about finding anything. Oh, no. <clears throat> Our plans have been adjusted slightly. You all are to remain on high alert here. No sudden movements, nothing suspicious. We now know that Stein is indeed the traitor. However, I know he was quite close to a few of you. I want to make one thing abundantly clear. Soon? I will issue a challenge to Opia. They will return to me the science experiment that you all created here, as well as the rogue pyromancer, or we will execute the prisoners. I will announce this tomorrow. They will have 24 hours to comply. I do not expect them to take this offer, they are exceptionally foolish. As such, prepare for war. And I put you back at the alley. How do you react? He was trying to send us the warning ahead of time. It seems like he's figured out that we have, say, Miscellany and Stein. Well, it still is ahead of time. Mm-hmm. We gotta use this chance to get in there, strike first. It's kind of becoming more than just a rescue mission now, isn't it? So here's the thing. Theoretically, if we do just hand them over, they will give us our guys back, and they won't execute Theo, but we will be sacrificing two people. There's no way Riddle's gonna do that. Yeah. There's no way really any of us would go along with that plan, let's be honest. <laughs> I'm not He's here for... Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here for the triple S true ending. <laughs> not gonna settle for something like that. She kind of gives, she like snorts, <laughs> and she gives you a look like, okay. So, I guess 
First things first, we should probably tell the others about this. Theo sent this specifically. She was pretty desperate to send it too. Hmm. Trouble's trying to think. I'm going to be honest, I'm going to analyze the method by which she sent it, the context of what she sent and why she sent it, because there might be secondary meanings here. Theo is extremely clever. Mm hmm Okay. I, I, any insight that you've got would be <laughs> really helpful. Well, let me think. She sent it to you through Rude. possessing you. Using a box to possess me, to lead me to, to Uno. the actual messenger. Uno actually shakes his head and, like, does a, a two, like, sort of, like, scissor gesture. Uh, he he tries to communicate to uh, you uh, to you through Fate Weaver. Either of us would have done. I lucked out and heard the message. You uh -huh. found me. I knew. It could have happened in the reverse. It didn't matter. I see. I see. So Jake. one of you was. Wait. When did you hear the message? Uno gestures like, uh, like, does like a clock a few hours ago. Okay. So we still have about a day before he declares this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So we need to think. He he's preparing for war, so even he knows we're coming. So we need to Trouble's thinking. She's thinking through all of her interactions with Theo about if there's something Theo is trying to convey about her plan to them through this. Well this this changes things because we can't just go in and rescue our people and then come back that that would still be war we should use the opportunity while we're rescuing our people to somehow see if we can cripple them so they can't launch an attack on us so do you share this information with everybody else at opia yeah, Treble's already opening her cons, like, messaging Riddle, and she pretty much sends it to Riddle and Verona and the director, like, the board of directors, effectively, <laughs> because she's like, before I send it mass to everyone, let me, like... <laughs> you, get, um, you get a few moments of silence, and then... Uh, oh, God, everyone's comms go off at once. Uh, as you see a message travel out, radiating from Riddle. Uh... It's a very simple response to something so severe. Every able-bodied person at Flow, prepare yourselves. Be ready to move in the next 24 hours going to war. She didn't even let me... <laughs> <laughs> didn't even let me proofread. And I'm going to put us to BRB. This, these are our final scenes. <laughs> I'm gonna Dang. run to the back. Oh. Hello, chat. Hi, chat. <laughs> I'm simply vibing. Ah, don't forget Looks to Looks like we got a war on our hands. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Wow, <laughs> don't like fuck, dude. You, you still do that? <laughs> Might as well ask them to hit the, yeah. hit, hit the bell, bro. Like, come on. Smash that bell. Hit that uh, favorite. Uh -huh. Vote five. Mm -hmm. Five stars. Uh, retweet it. That's now outdated too. Yeah. But yeah. How are you doing, Jackson? Yeah, like, Enjoying your cube yeah. venture? No. At the end of the day, you found a TV. You love TVs. You play games on those. You can play. You can play Melee. That looks like a CRTV. Oh yeah. <laughs> you love Melee. Run Doom. 
Yeah, it's time to prepare for war. The next scene of the slugging in Skyrim 20th edition. <laughs> oh man, the rescue was gonna be hard enough, but now we got to do more stuff. Mm -hmm. Gotta get our hot black and white haired men back. <laughs> I miss them. Yeah. How are you doing, chat? Have you all remembered to hydrate with your gamer fuel? Your... I'm back. Welcome back. <gasps> I can play for some more dancing all night on that TV. I thought that was for PSP. <laughs> <laughs> God, this session is great. Yeah. <laughs> ba -da -da -da. Yeah, everybody remember to stretch. Use the bathroom. Get some water. Yeah, make sure to stay hydrated and stuff. Have a snack. It's been four hours. Prep yourselves. Fucking hello. At least uh, the uh, all my uh, yelling is finally done. Yeah, congrats. Not any voices anymore, other than the usual ones. Hey, Bren, thank you for mashing the buttons. I was wondering who was doing that. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Great job being fucking... annoying. <laughs> yes. I, I wrote all Always. I wrote all the text, loaded it into a character sheet, and went, "Hey Bren, whenever you get close to the gold things, mash these." <laughs> yes. And Bren's like, "I'm gonna make them longer the closer they are to the gold shit." <laughs> That's so cool. That's why I couldn't fucking uh, react uh, in the chat on the side because my name was instrumentality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I see. Instrumentality says lol, lamau. Lol, lamau. Lol, lamau. Okay. Lol, lamau. This is hype. Honestly, that wouldn't be that far from actual instrumentality. <laughs> yeah, to everyone, I'm sorry for. Uh... Dodging lover cold, but it doesn't be in character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna accept those channel points, chat. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's, it's big. It's a big green button. It's <laughs> flashing, bro. Dude, I have 92k. I don't need any more. Uh, <laughs> how do you have so much? Because I have chat. I have chat open during stream, so I can moderate. Wow, insider trading. Jesus. Yeah, get In good. Investment game. If I get the sub, will you accept it? I already have a sub. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I'm sorry, I can't control the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Okay. Well, it's time. Oh, uh, Roma, I have a question. Oh, I'm trying to figure out what grass the earth is. He's an old world reflection. Trying to hold you hold on oh. to the, the first earth. Yeah, what the hell is this crap about something before one? Yeah. Nothing comes yeah. before one. That's why one is one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what about zero? Idiot? Well, this bitch hasn't heard That's of nothing. <sighs> allow me <laughs> Allow me to explain. Wait, no, this is a thing that I'd actually do in character. Never mind. You don't get it. Yeah, it's the thing no. is like we have two characters who can explain this in character. <laughs> this guy doesn't know about pre-burning world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now comes a very important moment. The moment that arrives in all good, in all good games before everything comes to a head. You know what's about to occur. You know it. You love it. It's time to pick. It's time to do the single most important thing. It's time to decide. <clears throat> uh, 
Rest is now mandatory. You have one night before the operation begins. Whatever shape it takes. Who do you spend this time with? Willow first. Melly. Let's go! <laughs> Hold on. Oh, oh, that's not fair. That was easy. <laughs> what do you mean that was easy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no, hold on. I'm going to actually give that a hot sack. Hey, Ace. Hey, Ace. I, I, is, are all my options right here in front of me? No, no. You can choose anyone. I, literally pick I, anyone. It's uh, literally the option I picked last time, but I'm trying to... I'm trying to think, do I do I go with what I tell you or can I change it? You what? can change it. I mean, fuck it. I'll, I'll just keep it the same. I'll put I'll, I'll pick say. Fuck it. Let's go. Oh, I made her too big. <laughs> hey, Argus. Yeah. What are you doing tonight? You know, it's been a long day. Yeah. And I've been loaded up with burn during the yeah. whole thing. I think I'm going to stream. Let's go. <laughs> Literally, James, James, I'm going I, to strangle you. I, I, I was like, Jay messaged me and he's like, Oh, yeah. dude, Jackson finally picked. Who yeah, Argus is gonna spend time with. with. And, Giga chat option. and he said, Giga chat option. And I was like, Is he just gonna spend it by himself? Is that it? <laughs> is that, that, is that the Sigma it? male option? <laughs> I will be waiting my for my dollars. I fucking knew it. Let's go. <laughs> The bets that were placed on which yeah. option Argus was gonna pick, and Brynn hard committed first fucking time. <laughs> the first time this conversation happened, Brynn hard committed to, uh, he's gonna end up alone. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, finally, last but not least, uh, hey, Basil! Yeah. Who are you gonna spend the evening with? Um, that one guy I met once over a bad salad. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are very normal. Hey Willow. Yep. Do you give give me legal like okay. Give me legal license to uh to add something to your scene, okay? I got I got something for you. Yeah, I'll give you legal license. Nice. Okay. <laughs> then we got this. Okay. In that case. Hey, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I care you so much. I just want you to know. <laughs> well, he Robo, why are you holding a lead pipe? Dude, he, he, cares, <laughs> he cares himself so much too. That's why he picks himself. <laughs> Bro, this is the decision I would make. Also, like, why I'm so frustrated by it. This is the decision I would also make. You know what? You are arg nasty. <laughs> Everyone, please clap. Uh, okay. So, first up. Memories. Again. Dancing. And draw themselves to the surface. She remembers something old. Ancient and buried. She places her hand on the door and tries it once. Oh, no luck. Okay, uh, let's try something else. <clears throat> Ooh, intercom, nice. Uh, hey, anyone in there? Can you hear me? <sighs> Takes finger off the button. Uh, maybe they're having breathing, breathing difficulties or something. Okay, I gotta get that open. Okay, um. <clears throat> Hits the button again. Go <sighs> to the door is... Oh, it's a name. Okay. Trouble. Here we go. It locks in place and... Uh, the door slowly slides open as the girl walks in and looks around the room and is like... <clears throat> Ooh. Okay. She moves a little more hurriedly, places her hands on the sides of what appears to be a cryopod and slowly unlatches it and helps you out. There you go. Take it nice and easy. Are you alright? How are this you girl, feeling? This girl kind of steps out. 
readies herself as soon as this girl across from her starts talking. Her face shifts. I cannot control it, but her wow. face shifts to a very annoyed expression, and she just lets out another sigh, just like... <sighs> <laughs> How are you doing? You're gonna make me explain it. <laughs> gotcha. Annoyed. <laughs> The girl slowly turns around as the person in front of her slowly starts to move around the room. She traveled over to the computer terminal while the other reaches down into a crate and sort of pulls out what appears to be... Oh, is that a gun? Yeah. Do you know how to use these things? Probably just about as well as you can. Yeah, I think I trust you more than I trust myself with that. This girl, she does not seem happy about the situation. She, her voice is so soft, like almost like she's whispering, trying to keep keep the sound down. She's so upset about what's happening. She's <laughs> almost in a huff, a puff. Her flippant attitude, almost ignoring this girl. Well, um, it's nice to meet you. My name's Riddle. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask, who are you? <laughs> I'm. Well, you already know my name. I'm Trouble. Uh, nice to meet you. She remembers slowly extending a hand to this person who she could feel in real time was genuinely considering whether or not she was valuable enough to keep around. Riddle's eyes slowly open on the bench. She stares up into the sky. Okay. Okay, impromptu brain surgery. Maybe not my best idea. She slides up and swings her legs down on the bench and sort of stares off across Fuse City. <sighs> Slowly exhales, taps her cheeks, and then reaches up to her um, uh, eye again. And just isn't stopping. Not letting that memory go. She eases herself up, readies her staff, and she's like, so many hours left. Find a good place to spend it. She quietly walks off city beyond the other individual who works her way away from the guy's building basil why do you go to this place why do you go here what draws you to the location that you just so willfully decided to leave. Communication. <laughs> Good answer, right? <laughs> you stand in the middle of the broken glass, almost let the quiet of the night rest over you. Can you ping me? I can't find me oh, on yeah, this yeah, big, beautiful map. Thank you. Uh, there you oh, go. There As against all odds, you do in fact see someone over here. The Capsies machine. Focus. I was hungry. He slowly raises a hand, presses the button, and it's going to roll the D100. He looks down, it's kind of low quality. Hmm. He lets out a slight noise, and then rolls again. Finds one that's slightly higher quality. Pulls it out, shakes his head, turns over, tosses it to you. Oh, thank you. You looked hungry. I am. I somehow knew you'd be here. Really? You felt the call as well? I think I did. I don't know if I want to believe in some greater destiny pulling us all in a certain direction, but there is something beautiful that something as simple as an immaterial call could bring two people who don't even know each other's names together. Sort of moves over and actually hops up on the table. The call is extremely material. It's very loud. In fact, it doesn't shut up. It's less about following it in a material order and more picking which order to follow. And what brought you to the bad salads? He, like, looks over. 
Well, if I'm given a choice between 999 different options, wouldn't I want to pick the best one? <laughs> she sits next to him. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So, who are you then? He looks down at himself. He's like, hmm. you're the absolute free will prog. What should I call myself? Uh, I don't have a project title or anything similar. Maybe something that contrasts what you are. If you're absolute free will, maybe I'm something closer to Mankind's Guaranteed Survival Project. I see. Isn't it odd that those two things would be on opposite sides of the same coin? I believe you were supposed to be one of them, but you don't need to be any longer, apparently. Which necessitates my existence. He, uh, slowly, like, kicks his feet looking up at the sky. I'm the tree of life, and you're the sky that stretches out up above it. So then we were always destined to meet, but never touch. He turns and looks. We could have been touching. Once, maybe. He moves a little closer. It was a decision that you made that changed things, though. I was supposed to be a part of you. You were supposed to be a part of me. We were meant to be one. Maybe. Now can, we are two. But can't, in a way, two people still be one? He pauses. United in purpose. United in purpose, contact, intimacy? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you feel him actually smile and he's like mm. he like almost like it. it's funny you can't see his eyes but you can tell he's just so sad I'm looking at those stars is that how people become one? I think that there is nothing more beautiful than two people being completely and openly and honest with each other Unfortunately, I haven't experienced it yet, but I do hope to before the infinite becomes finite. Ah, that does sound rather nice. I think I'd like to before the finite becomes infinite. He turns so, and looks. you are truly the opposite of me then. Hmm. You bear the curse. I was set to end this world. But then what? I hope I find enough goodness in my heart to wish for something good for you all. Kind of selfish of me to shirk that responsibility, isn't it? I don't believe you could be you while still bearing it. I suppose it goes back to whether or not you care about something more than you care about yourself. Is such a thing possible? I think it might be. By my very purpose of my creation, I suppose I'm meant to care about you more than I care about myself. Or maybe that's a choice I made. The only things that I have dedicated to my new identity are the status and station that you left behind. Thank you for that. If it's a choice, then that implies that you have free will, doesn't it? He smiles. So maybe you and I aren't so different after all. <laughs> he taps the side of his head. For me, the fish grows to the size of the tank. Fortunately for you, this tank seems infinite. He looks over at you and kind of nods. <laughs> Before it becomes finite, then. And until it becomes in infinite. He quietly nods as... You see... Kai's soldiers actually bear down on the location, and they're like, Yeah, we got her. She came back here for some reason. Hmm. He holds up a hand. Stop. Huh? We're speaking. 
I believe this process is she's completing me. They look at each other and take a step backwards. <laughs> Are you not frightened by the concept of eternity then? Now that that responsibility has been thrust on you? <sighs> I crave it. I could see how you would want that. But as soon as I realized that I was meant to continuously carry out a cycle throughout all of eternity, I found the beauty in something that ends. He smiles more. Oh, you really are providing the, <laughs> I guess, the context I need. If you can find beauty there, then look at me. A being that ends. Well, imagine. Mm -hmm. A composer on a world long, long ago. Yes. He can't hear, but he's spurred into action by a strong emotion. His heart's broken, but he can still make sound. And despite the fact that that man who cannot hear perishes, his music lives on. It echoes long past his life. And doesn't it echo throughout all worlds in some way? That emotion? It's something truly beautiful. It extends beyond the self. If we accept that we are finite, our creations must be infinite, correct? However, if you choose to exist forever, then you never allow those ripples to actually branch off from yourself. You're always guiding them. Right. Eternal you have to existence. let them be free to <laughs> carry on in someone else's story. I've heard your story. I've heard you are finding all the previous iterations of yourself, and you're guiding them away. Is that not similar to a mother bird allowing them to fly free? Her children? If her children were captured? <laughs> is this eternity, or is this freedom? Freedom is, in a way, an eternity of choices, but not necessarily an eternity of time. The guy's soldiers are all staring at each other for a second, and they're like, Hey, boss, you're gonna want to see this. He, like, moves his way back around and, like, actually starts to actively film what's happening here. As, like, <laughs> as, as the conversation continues. Yeah, it's... It's this apocalypse seed. It's responding. We're... We're reaching ascendancy. Uh, they look up, up and over. He's like, an eternity of choices. That's freedom? It almost feels like a math equation. I could swap around which words are on which sides to make everything tip upside on its head. Misery and salvation. They almost seem like even measure. A god and a devil. Evenly matched. Eternity. Freedom. He holds up one hand each and then flips his palms over. Isolation and love. He flips his hands back over again. <laughs> Where do mortals sit here? Do you believe yourself to be mortal? I believe I am now. That necessitates your existence. I believe I am no longer. He places a hand to his chest. <laughs> <laughs> you you watch as the tubes actually start to like flare with little bits of energy. Yeah, kind of a bloom now. Okay, restraints in place. Holy shit. Uh, like, all of the soldiers are genuinely taking cover, almost like something <laughs> cracks to life in the back of your mind. Soldiers taking cover from a nuclear test, diving down in a trench. They're watching you. They're watching the two of you, almost like they're watching a supernova. Well, then. In that case... How do you intend to spend your remaining hours, years, days? We both may stretch into eternity and into nothingness, but there's one truth that we need to hold absolute. Our time is limited. That's right. And despite the fact that I have no way of actually knowing this, I feel like something big is going to happen soon. <laughs> so 
I've decided that I wanted to spend the rest of my time being completely open and honest with someone that I could. I guess that's what the call was for. He's silent and he's like, if we accept that forever is waiting, yet time is limited, I think there's only one thing left to do. Full honesty. Communication. Communication. You all. Yeah? I will be taking her. (laughs) He stands up and and holds a hand for you. (laughs) She takes his hand. (laughs) I wish to look at the water. Do you want to come with me? I would love nothing more. He takes your hand and leaps and literally you watch his space bends and you hear a crack noise as he (gasps) vanishes. Pause. Oh shit, we lost them. We lost them. Uh uh get everyone out here. Uh what do you what do you mean you're chasing a gamer on a motorcycle? Get back over here! And uh quickly, all of Geist is scrambled and moving throughout the city. And yet, for the remainder of the night, they do not find you. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> Ascension! <laughs> you guys are on some next level shit with that. Ascension! The that was fucking incredible. The broadening of shit. perspectives! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking He didn't Christ. take burn from Beethoven, so I knew that he was a real one. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was like fucking... You guys start going off, and I'm like, I can't, I can't keep up. I know they're spitting. I can't keep up. <laughs> I, I, I love, I love the DBZ. Like you can see them teleporting around. Yeah. <laughs> We're enhancing the rewatch experience. We it's are. Like, it's like that moment where you see two shadowy figures playing chess, talking to each other, <laughs> and it's like you don't have enough context to understand the scene yet. However, <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's like, uh, it's like how, <laughs> genuinely, I, I think it works as a good bookend because you were spitting shit with Treble earlier with the science stuff up. Trust me, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I empirically understand this world. <laughs> Let me. Oh, boy. Hey, Ace! I fucking, why do I gotta go after that, bro? <laughs> oh, do you know why? No, 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 let's, okay, no, okay, no, okay. no, let's go. You've got a, you've got a few things coming. Go. Oh. It's for the tone shift. Yes. <laughs> you are waiting. Uh, or, sorry, she is waiting, and you slowly open the door, pushing something in front of you. Hmm. I... Time for you to get out of here. Uh, she actually looks over. I see. I understand. It was a pleasure working with you. Oh, uh, uh, I'm I'm not here to kill you. <laughs> I, the proclamation that spread through Opia Systems. Uh, both myself and Stein need to be handed over to the demonic forces. And you think we're going to do that? Certainly, it would be the logical course of action. Yeah, you, you... I don't think you understand anything. Okay. <laughs> just get you in the chair. I understand many things, thank you very much. Oh, really? <laughs> mm, she nods. Then what's the Pope? <laughs> ah, are you speak? Uh, which Pope are you speaking of? There's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a multitude of Popes. Many of which committed hain- I'm not going to explain further. Your burn will suffer. I don't have burn. Oh. Right. Yeah, I don't actually care. She looks at you. Your body. Yeah? Do you need assistance? Assistance with what? Your, perhaps, medical condition. Look, I don't think you're the kind of person who should be pointing out medical conditions right now. (laughs) She goes quiet as you, like, lift her up and pop. You put her in the chair and she's like, "Uh, uh, um, uh, she's confused. Yeah? For what, for what purpose am I being removed from this room? Do you want to be in this room? 
She's quiet. I like, do feel I do feel somewhat safer in here, but no. Alright, then that's why I'm taking you out. You I'm gonna give you control over the frog. Um throw her out the window. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Look. It's better for you not to stay cooped up here. You don't understand a lot of things, and I make sure uh, it'd be nice to get some perspective, especially, at, you know, probably gonna need your help with the whole uh, thing that just got announced. She like looks around the room and tries to understand what's happening. You notice her trying to slowly squidge her tongue over to lick your hand. <laughs> Licks her in the head. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> and. You slowly push Say out into Fuse City as there's a quiet moment of realization. Opia right now is in chaos, so you simply wheel her out and you'll never quite forget the look that she had on her face. The second those lights fully set in, she went quiet, her eyes expanded, and then she said something. I... I'm so happy to be alive. The neon danced across her eyes. You traveled the next few steps. Silent. Up in the dorms. You woke up here? Willow and Melly. I'm so sorry about what I'm going to do to you, Willow. Melly's basically faux tending bar for you. Nervous habit. Okay, what can I get you? Uh, get me anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> How are you holding up from the news? Uh, I'm not liking the all-out war news and all that. Mm. Yeah. Huh. I mean... Knowing our bosses, they probably got something tricky planned. Yeah. Probably right now, Argos is probably thinking of a really good plan for all of us. Oh, yeah. She thinks. She thinks about all of the, like, loud, And we're back, Argonauts! She just heard through the ceiling a little while ago, like, Yeah, I bet he is. <laughs> <laughs> she, like, moves her way over. So... I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna ask the question. You going? Hmm. Well, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just, I don't know, I'm worried. I'm, I'm, I'm actually worried about this one. Well, you don't need to worry, because I'm the strongest. I'm gonna carry the, the plan to victory. Okay. You did just do all that crazy training. Just promise me something, okay? Yeah, I can, I can promise you anything, but... If you do go, and you meet this Eternity guy, punch him once in the face for me. <laughs> I'll punch him once for you and once for myself. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> She's like, I'm, I'm planning on volunteering too. But, um... Based on the roles I've been given in the past, I'm usually like a hold down the fort kind of person. Which, like, is good. Somebody's gotta, but I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna be in Eternity punching distance. Yeah, I wouldn't want you to get too close to Eternity. He kind of um, instantly kills people who get close. Really? Yeah, I, I barely survived some of his attacks. Okay, then make me another deal. If you're, like, close to death and you're really going through it, just call my name and I'll come help, okay? You're gonna hear me all the way down there? Yeah, I got great hearing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If I'm really close to death, I'm. I don't want you to get close to eternity. 
Okay. If I'm if I'm really close to death, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually run away. Oh. I'm not gonna push myself too hard. I'm gonna see if I can find another day. That's okay. That's what I love to see. She like leans across <laughs> the table and kisses you. <laughs> right at this exact moment, your door <laughs> slam. <laughs> As someone kicks, like, basically, like, kicks down the door somehow, despite the fact that it opens horizontally. Hey, you guys! Oh, fucking hell, uh, Ruth, I, what I, the I, hell? Hey, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Willow, I got your challenge. Oh, you got my challenge? I got your letter of challenge. You guys, aren't gonna settle, you guys aren't gonna settle this in the morning? There's no time. Listen, we got, we got some bad blood to settle. Yeah, it's something that we we, <laughs> we need to find out. Something we finally got to find out now that her reflections are of equal strength. She says, like, borderline, like, towering over you. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? Okay. I mean, if you're going to go somewhere, what should I tell Riddle if she calls for you? Tell, tell her. Tell her. Tell her we're probably going to say the same thing so you can say it. <laughs> tell her that we're training. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and on the floor above. If there's anybody else here, no, there isn't. <clears throat> Argos. Yes. You've been streaming for the past few hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's so relaxing, and it? He's feeling a lot better after his uh, weird as hell escapades today. Yeah. This one's been chilling. Uh, they're, they, they absolutely made sure to make time to spend it here. Uh, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh. Hold on. Oh, cast is on the bed too. <laughs> cast like, like vaguely posing just out of you, and like, <laughs> yeah, you spend a significant amount of time streaming. Hey, I want to ask a question. How are you turning over what Cal said to you earlier? Oh boy. <laughs> I mean he's he's trying to like think about how he could do that, but like he also feels like he's kinda been doing that. Mm. Like he's I don't know, he's kinda living living life the way he wants to. Yeah. Even if a lot of that is uh, helping and other people and caring for other people that are like in bad situations or need help. Um, but if I don't know, Cal's one of the wisest people he knows. So if Cal is saying it, there's probably something to it that he's not seeing. <laughs> but I don't think he's uh, found an answer to that. You. Yep. Cogitate hard on it. You turned it over in your head. Cal's lies. He knows what's up. He knows how this works. You finish. You actually, like, wind up completing your stream. You hang out with your friends for a while and spend what is absolutely a night of decompression for you. But there's something that, like, still sort of tugs at you a little bit. You wind up. Post stream, you see Mike and cast off, and you sort of find yourself wandering to a familiar location that you were actually just last, last night. You make your way over here, exhaling hard through your nose, letting the breath escape you as 
You sort of look out over the city. And... You think you see some. They're mixed in with the crowd, but they're headed straight towards you, and it sets your teeth on edge. That can't be right. You rub your eyes. The games get to you? Walks up the stairs. And you find yourself face to face with something you recently lost. He, Wait. Sta he <laughs> stares at you, and you stare at him. What do you do? Oh, am I doing an ace? <laughs> <laughs> and then the mouth opens, and you hear a voice or an intonation you would never expect from that mouth come out. Is that some sort of slang? <laughs> <laughs> doing an ace. Uh, yes, my man, you are doing an ace right now. You're doing great. <laughs> ace is oh, high. Thank God. <laughs> As I, I'm gonna move the Argos aside, but keep in mind that it's him here. <laughs> <laughs> you are not staring at Theo herself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to explain to me how. Uh, fished you out of a swamp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How are you here? <laughs> well, um, I've been messing around with, uh, the Court of Instrumentality, which is how I sent the message earlier. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, um. I'm sorry about how coarse or grading, maybe the Court of Instrumentality might have been with your mind. Uh, well, that's all right. It's, you know. I've had unmoderated chats before. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you might be able to handle it, but at the same time, ah, uh, no, that was sort of a last resort. Getting the body over here was difficult, admittedly. I had to take I... the bus. <laughs> 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 she oh. she wheels each <laughs> arm one above the other innocently. The image is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I am seriously impressed. <laughs> she sort of, she smiles, she's like, <clears throat> uh, Admittedly, my World 12 knowledge isn't exactly up to... It's mostly based on movies and books and otherwise, so... You know, I might have been a little excessive in my payments. I'm sorry if I racked up a credit card debt for you. Uh, no problem, probably. Probably. <laughs> she gets a big smile on her face and she's like, right, why are we why are we engaging in small talk? She moves over. This is horrifying to the cameras. <laughs> you she moves and like takes clasp both of your hands and those eyes open and fully sparkle. Argos, it's so good to see you again. It's really good to hear from you too. I... <laughs> I'm gonna give her a big awkward hug. <laughs> You hug yourself, and you hug Theo, and it's oh God, weirdly- I'm terrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's- it's fine, I've been called bony before as well. She tries to compliment you, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> she sort of pauses and is like, Right, uh, there's so many things I need to catch up on. I'm sorry for borrowing your body like this. It's what I had access to. Oh, this is- this is great. I'm just... Honestly, I'm just glad you're here. I, I... She actually stops. She's like, I am... Too. She, like, looks around at the area. I am too. She spins and, like, starts to, like, move back and forth. And she's like, now that I found you, I don't need to feel guilty about... Yeah! I'm here! You see this just, like, look of pure innocent bliss spread over her face. I'm here. 
she bounces on her heels. <laughs> well, while you're here, let's make the most of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I look around and like, <laughs> what's going on or to do around here? Uh, uh, huh. She like sort of pauses. Um. Hmm. Uh, she like, uh, she's like, oh, uh, I guess we can roll down that hill, or, um, <laughs> it's kind of awkward. But you, you look at, you look at this girl rush off ahead of you, in your body. She <laughs> moves ahead, and you feel a slight tether between the two of you. She suddenly got very embarrassed and self-conscious of like, oh yeah, I found him. Oh god, what do I do? Uh, be careful, I'm not that durable. <laughs> you get a, um, you, you, you get a vision of, like, a, she, like, raises to the top of the hill, goes stiff as a board, and slides. <laughs> 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 you have no idea how she did that. She just slides down the hill. Oh, God, what a sight. <laughs> <laughs> Truly horrifying. But I'm glad she's happy. <laughs> She slides down and sort of, like, comes to a rest here and, like, pauses. And, like, looking up at the sky, she sort of ceases. She's like, hey. Yeah? Am I... I'm supposed to talk to you about battle plans right now. I'm supposed to talk to you about the future of, uh, the organization and, uh, I don't know, Opia and the world... Is it okay if I just stay here for a little bit? Of course. Yeah. That stuff, it's important, but... I mean, you went through a lot to get here. Enjoy it. I mean, I just fucked off and streamed for a while, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't judge you. She stays silent, and then the both of you sit there, looking up at the sky, together. Um, Theo staying in utter and perfect silence as... You just feel this sense of actual peace spread out from this person around you. It felt like she had nine million things to say to you, and you to her. But in this moment, words aren't really necessary. You simply sit... And you watch the stars slowly move. And then, you hear a boom up here. You're both looking up at the sky. Yeah. And then, in your vision, a woman, arms on, uh, hands on hips, looking over you like, so what are you doing? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, what's it look like? <laughs> Hello, I'm here. pro streamer Argos. I came here because I saw Argos's <laughs> body signal on the thing. She says, having she closing a little data pad. But I get here, and who do I find? She says, <laughs> looking both of you in the forehead. Your dear sweet fellow muse. Yeah, I didn't. You know, I should have figured this would happen. <laughs> Am I interrupting a date? Mm -hmm. Are you guys going on another date without me? Uh. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What? Theo pats the hill next to her, repeatedly. And then looks at you expectantly, Trouble. She wants me to sit here? She wants you to sit down in the line. She's patting, she's patting, she's patting repeatedly. Which side of the line, Theo? <laughs> she, she wants, she's like... <laughs> yeah. Because this is technically happening right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll just keep it like that. <laughs> she just sits there and she's like, there we go. Welcome to uh, a very surreal experience. <laughs> Trouble's just like, hmm, I have a bunch of questions, but it seems like you guys are just sitting and I don't want to interrupt you. I, I just felt like it would, be, it would be awkward for me to sit there and watch from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> I, considering what you'd, you'd be seeing, I wouldn't blame you. 
but <laughs> you both you both start to say this and then you both like look down at Theo and you just see that smile still on her face kind of and like for a split second it's like that that feeling of yeah no that makes sense yeah I don't want to interrupt and it's like sort of blends away as you just see her like <sighs> this is so nice trouble pats Argos Theo on the head <laughs> just pat pat <laughs> are you You're having fun? yeah I really am I told you you would when you finally got up here I'm sure it's you not... said something similar she says peering around her to Argos <laughs> yep. it's, not my... it's not my own body but it's close you can see it right? no? Mm. or are you still seeing it through the same vision as before? It's a little garbled, but I'm getting closer every single time. Trouble smiles. She's quiet. <laughs> and then Argus like lays back in the grass. You stay there for a little bit and feel like Theo remains there for a little bit. Trouble, do you actually like genuinely join them? Yeah, Trouble, it's the thing of Trouble can tell that Theo kind of needs a second before she starts hitting her with the, so what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's like, I'll just wait. It was just Trouble was like, Trouble found them. And she was like, if I sit here and wait for them over here, I'm like a weird stalker. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's like, I'll come over and make myself a third wheel. Okay. <laughs> she or repeats. second wheel? It's a three-pronged bicycle. We're a tricycle. <laughs> Theo, I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> she, she sort of uh, remains sitting here and she's like, huh, there is something important. What's up? Completely forgot. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Okay. Turns over, looks at Argos. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you both share a look across the way. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> you actually look down at your um at your GPS, and it seems like everyone's navigating in the direction of Melly's right now. It seems like it's going to be open. We really? can go to Melly's, but there's I would have thought crowd. Melly would be uh, busy tonight. But it's well, her her navigator is saying she's going to the cafe. I assume probably for like some kind of party. Oh boy! You know what? We can do a great bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Uh, Theo. Yeah. Close your eyes really quick and okay. don't be alarmed. Okay. Trouble teleports via slightly to the left. <laughs> there, I uh, disintegrated all of the, the swamp goo and moss that was on the inside of your clothing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It was squishy to move. Uh, <laughs> she yes, she thank offers you. with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> and do you do you like genuinely take Theo down there? Yeah. Why wouldn't we? Hell yeah, okay. let's go. Really, it's like, there's, like, stuff to talk about, but it's like, you know. That's business. Give the, give the yeah, girl, but... like, fucking two hours to chill. Yeah, give her a hamburger. She just... Argos' body is starving. He was in the swamp. He's, his lungs were probably full of water until just now. Yeah. How did you get out of the cube? There will be a few more short things. I First of all, happy anniversary, everyone. We have been yeah. playing this game officially for one year. Good job, squad. Yay. Um, okay. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Woo. I ask for your patience with just a few more short scenes. And we'll be good. God, this has been a year. What the fuck? It's been a freaking <laughs> year. Willow. Yes. Um.
clash, you both slam into one another. The training grounds. Willow, you roll backwards, picking your newly reinforced grasp of the earth up. Oh, nice. It can actually take a hit now. Not bad. <laughs> Yeah, let's see if you can take a hit now. <laughs> I think if any, I have anything going for me, it is my stamina and my incredibly hard head. <laughs> Willow jumps over and <laughs> kicks her in her incredibly hard head. <laughs> Give me a roll to do! <laughs> you reel back and... Oh, right, she'll clash with this. She grabs you by the leg and starts spinning you, and she's like... <clears throat> Okay, Swamp Girl, she throws you up in the air. It's going to be exactly like the day we were first here. And as you fly up into the air, the red light catches you for a split second as you're thrown aloft and you see something in absolute and perfect detail. It sort of, it feels like the world brightens up and spreads out all around you. A familiar vision. A time long since past, but you remember Ruth like, <clears throat> well, I have multiple things going for me, like my incredibly cute hat and you endeavored to kick her in her incredibly <laughs> cute hat and you were thrown aloft, flying to the absolute heights. But, well, today things are different, right? <laughs> yes. Stronger. <laughs> and we got more on the line. <laughs> you wheel through the air as you, again, catch up with the present. Willow, you pick up uh, speed in the air. She lowers her reflection. You lower yours. You both didn't have them back then. All right. It's time for you to see what the grass the earth can do. Oh boy. What's the plan, Willow? <laughs> and Willow is going to combine the might of grasp the earth and herself <laughs> and do a starlight punch. <laughs> but she's she's going to wait for to wait to clash with Ruth. Oh to see whose weapons are stronger. <laughs> Ruth raises her blade and she's like that principle you just discovered today, I came up with a little term for it for myself. The unity of all things, right? She takes a step backwards and levels the Sword of Hope. This is a technique I was waiting to bust out on some big bad pyromancer, but I think here is probably best. Every person who's picked up Grasp is still with you right now, right? Yep. Every person who's carried this sword is here to help me lift it. And she does the impossible and lifts the Sword of Hope on her own, bracing it across her back. Okay, max power versus max power. Uh, give me a roll, Willow. All it's, right. It's time to GM roll. Go. Oh, wait. Also, plus 1d6. Oh. Give me a plus 1d6. Uh, she's close. She's gonna push herself. Oh, fuck. Okay, hold on, I need a math. Hold on, I need a math. Um, 20... You rolled a 25. She rolled a 22. You added a 2. She added a 5. Uh, oh, hold on, no. <laughs> you exactly me! <laughs> no, no, fuck it, I'm keeping that result. You're not re-rolling. Uh, you... You raise this starlight punch, and she raises her sword aloft, and you both fly together and slam into one another. And in that exact moment, you. <clears throat> Again, another billowing light travels out through the area. Your previous selves walk alongside you. Remnants of your Station One days. For you, Willow, this is the point that you came from. This is the strength that you've grasped in this world. For Ruth, this is the strength she now has to lift the, uh, the blade. You both clash and 
In a moment, they both fade away, almost consumed by your respective weapons. You both carry the same weight. <laughs> you fly backwards and slam into the train tracks. Ruth flies backwards and slams into the wall. Uh, oh, shit! She runs at you again. You pick yourself up and run at her. You both carry the same weight. You both died in those station one day. So the purpose of this duel... Willow, what was it? The purpose of this duel is to see who's stronger. The weaker one stays behind. Both of us can't die again, Ruth yells. <laughs> throwing a punch, give me a roll to do. <laughs> Willow also throws a regular punch. Ruth, <laughs> the attack flies at you. <laughs> she ducks down, sets herself in formless style, preps herself. <laughs> we can't leave them alone again. She picks herself up. Give me another roll to do. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> you close in and boom, you hit her and she stumbles backwards. No matter what, <laughs> this time for sure, <laughs> whoever goes down there, we make sure she reaches forward and reels her head back to head by you. <laughs> One of us is coming home. Boom! Your heads impact and those colors dance in front of your eyes again as you... Ruth slides down. You buckle. Your head goes to the side for a split second. But you barely remain standing. Your legs are about to give way, but you stay up. And almost, as a matter of course, raise a hand, grasp the earth adorning it. And you remain perfectly balanced. Ruth lands, staring up at that sky. <laughs> Shit, he turned the lights on. <sighs> oh. Man, I'm gonna feel that for the rest of the day. <laughs> well, you got me. Damn it. Okay. Ah. <laughs> you <laughs> land nearby. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Make me a deal, though. You're actually coming back, right? I swear, I'm I'm coming back. I don't care what I do. I'm gonna make sure I'm not leaving you alone. Damn straight. If there's any problems up here, I'll handle them. So you go fight to your heart's content. <sighs> Pro protect everyone back home for me, all right? Yeah, if anyone's, I guess, brave enough to stay behind, I got them. We gotta have one of us stay behind. Yeah. Both of your comms, Buzz. We go off. Huh. Meeting at Melly's. Uh, oh, fuck. Damn it, not only did you beat me in a fight, you beat me in the girlfriend race. This is bullshit. <laughs> 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 the Willow kind of laughs a little bit. <laughs> you know, honestly, I thought you would have been the one to beat me in that one. <laughs> I thought I stood a chance with Riddle, and then it turns out I blew it, though I'm not sure how. <laughs> She says, like, rolling her eyes. Well, it's because you died longer than I did. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. Okay. Oh, she, like, starts to drag herself up and offers you a hand. Willow grabs her hand. And she yanks you to your feet. <clears throat> hey. When your story starts rolling around... You think I'm going to show up and grasp the earth? Definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she says with a smile as you're yanked to your feet. And again, vision sort of starts to spread and get away. Where's... Somebody remembers something. 
very descriptive, I know, but for her, <sighs> she digs around through a pile of crates, almost trying to find something over to the side. Uh, no, nothing over here. I mean, here's hoping the guys back at the center of Bullet Town don't give us too much trouble. Yeah, I mean, we always have the option not to group up with them and we can go live in the cargo pods by, with just each other. <laughs> she hears those words, doesn't respond, and then goes, yeah, that's uh, ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it works as a good backup option, right? I mean, yeah. It'd be easier if they didn't have a rocket launcher. <laughs> the vision fades. <sighs> Listen, all I'm saying is if, like, theoretically speaking, let's say this end of the world stuff doesn't really work out for us. Uh, mm -hmm. We could always run away to the middle of the desert and start a community. You've got those nifty terraforming powers. I've got, um, uh, whatever I bring to the table. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun, I suppose. Yeah. Right. A motorcycle bumbles around through the woods, bouncing. <sighs> hey! Uh, trouble. Um, there's no chance I could turn the motorcycle off the path and just, like, keep driving, right? <laughs> like, just keep going. See whatever's out there. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> I forget I'm I sorry. asked. Oh, it's okay. It'll be fine. We've already made up our minds. She offers a smile as. She remembers another phrase standing in front of Ace before saying goodbye. I mean. It's probably best to get out of here right now before you end up like me, right? What's wrong with you? It's a voice that echoes out. And? It repeats again. Ace's voice. What's wrong with you? As... Riddle's eyes slowly open. Huh? Blink, 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 blink. Stairs. She, like, lightly sets herself. Say is in the wheelchair, like, hmm. She seems to be in mental distress. I mean, that's not anything new. <laughs> Say smiles. Riddle, like, sort of sits up. Hey, Ace. Uh, hey. What are you guys doing? I mean, I was looking for you, really. She blinks. It stands up slowly. Can't control frog. Oh yeah, no, not this frog. Okay, let me. She sort of tilts her head. You, okay. Well, <laughs> here I am, I guess. She like sort of pats herself down, zoning out on a bench in the middle of the night. Not a great look, I gotta admit. No, nah, not especially when we have work we need to do. I guess. Doing okay? She pauses. Yeah. <laughs> I think I am. Um. You can sit back know. down, you know. This is fine. I'm just thinking back on some stuff. Do you remember when we walked down this place, like, ages back? You were out front, because you were ranked number one? Oh, this is that place? Really? You don't remember? I mean... I'm I'm supposed to be the one with the faulty memory. I mean, a lot has happened since then. She, like, looks down. She follows the path around. Yeah, it was kind of a wretched little thing back then. It was menacing a camera for no reason. Back then? Hey. <laughs> she, like, punches you in the arm. It's like, I think I've become more of a... I don't think I'm wretched anymore. I mean, ah, but, but you are still a thing. Plus, I think there are advantages to being a wretched little thing. 
Your stranger seems to be a wretched little thing. <laughs> I mean... I wonder why. <laughs> Riddle sort of genuinely pauses at this exact juncture. Thanks. Sort of looks back and forth. It's the last night before the big mission, and... Huh. You're looking for me? And me. Sir says proudly. Yeah. Two saddest people around. <laughs> you know that isn't even close to being true. <laughs> yeah. I, I believe I am quite happy right now. Yeah, because I, I provided you with that happiness. <clears throat> You're welcome. She smiles. Thank you. Your welcome is uh, registered and appreciated. Mm -hmm. This joy will become enduring. Yeah. Uh. So, what's the plan, Riddle? I mean, like, admittedly, we gotta strike them before they manage to fight back. I do not believe that is the type of plan that he is talking about. Hmm? The leg looks back and over. She looks down at Say in the wheelchair, looks up at Ace. Oh. Right. Her smile becomes significantly more gentle. It's selfish, but you want to see if Melly will make us some food? I mean, I guess, yeah. But... There's a reason I dragged Say out here and also wanted to find you. Hmm? She Kinda pauses. Pushes Say over here and then, like, has Say, like, face him. Alright. So, obviously, you know, things aren't going to go super smooth down there. Riddle stops, nods. Mm. They already haven't. Yeah. So, I guess. You two are the only people who can do this. Pretty much you're the only people I can rely on to do this task. Riddle tilts her head. With your isolation and Say's abilities on top of that, I think you two are the only ones who can save me. Gladly. <laughs> Riddle actually, like, scratches the back of her head. Yeah. She throws her arm around you! <laughs> it's like, hey, just returning the favor, right? Yeah, look. It's complicated. I'm tired of mourning. Tired of mourning my sister. Missed opportunities. Myself. I just... want... I want to live, and to do that, I desperately don't want to lose any piece of myself. While everyone says that the me that was put in that machine is gone, if there were two people who could rip it out, it would be you two. You watch as Riddle's smile deepens and she takes a step backwards. It's the answer to the paradox we always arrived at. I was always willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of the world, and you were always willing to sacrifice nothing. How do you solve something like that? How do you find a way around? She smiles. You rely on somebody else to stop you from sacrificing anything, and you make sure that the one with nothing gains something. It's not actually that hard. She holds her hand out, and you see that ESP still bubbling and burning around her. Leave it to me. I've got you. Hey, Riddle. Yeah. So what is Ace is gonna do? Walk up to Riddle? Yeah. Place his hand on her head? Yeah. Like a head pat? Yeah. And as he ruffles the hair... He's, yeah. gonna he's going to reality break to dispel that bubble for just a moment. <sighs> Everything cracks as, for a moment, say, oh, what the? As Riddle sort of pauses and she, like, looks around and... 
Oh, man. You see her, like, look down into the side, and then you feel what she's been balling up inside of her up to this point, and she just throws her he- arms around you and starts to sob. Like, it does not stop. It is a wall of tears. She feels that exact moment, and, like, it's incomprehensible babbling. She's just, uh, the entire time, it's just like, and, and he was trying so hard, and just so much all at once and the night drifts past just like that <clears throat> you make your way down to Melly's and your squad actually somehow manages to reunite in one location you Gather yourselves after a very puffy-eyed riddle. Uh, <laughs> trouble, you tend to a very puffy-eyed riddle as two Argoses wander around the location. Um, the door eventually actually cracks open. And someone unexpected travels through. Uh, riddle actually sort of like sniffling, like looks over at Squeaky. She has been a wreck for the last, like, 15, 20 minutes. Oh. Welcome home. It would appear you've woken up. You move your way back over. <clears throat> As Ruth makes her way up front, is like, Holy shit, Basil! <laughs> oh, hey, Ruth. She works, she works her way around, is like, you're telling me everything. <laughs> sorry, I lost your hat. <laughs> I'm sorry, I... Fuck, man! She puts you down here! She looks like shit. Bruised to hell. Riddle... Did you lose a fight? <laughs> I did. <laughs> she sort of pauses here as... Riddle sort of like... It's like, okay. <clears throat> if it's okay with everyone, I'm just gonna take a second. Um, I'll be right back. She looks at her friends. Travels outside. And... Works her way <sighs> outdoors. Separating herself from the party. She makes her way outside. Exhales, taking in the cool air. Readies herself. Jumps and lands on the roof. And sits down. This is Riddle Arendite broadcasting to all Activobia members. In the next few hours, we will, beginning, uh, we will be beginning what has a significant chance of being our final operation. I'm going to be honest with you all. You fought hard to make it to this point, and thank you for not only your service, but everything that you've given us. Thanks to your efforts, the war in the Silt Islands has come to a mostly peaceful resolution, and Belleth, while battle-scarred, will heal in time. I say this now, in full knowledge of not only how strong, but how brave you all are. We are going to fight an enemy that I cannot describe to you. We are fighting an opponent that exists in a realm beyond our comprehension. And as a result of that, I'm asking you all to trust me and this organization based on blind faith. I can't think of a single crueler thing. But... If you're willing to lend me your strength in this moment, I'd happily take it. This isn't about protecting the pyromancer that's currently under our care. This is about seizing an opportunity no world before us has ever had. This is about taking a chance for a future that could never, ever be imagined. If you want things to change, change them yourself. 
The best thing that I can do is offer you a stage to do so. For the remainder of the night, please take care of your yourselves. So when the morning comes, and when the next few days comes, I don't know how many of your faces I'll still be able to see. So from the bottom of my heart, this is official director of Obia, Riddle Arendite. Thank you for your service, and um, <laughs> it's corny, but I love you. The call traveled out. For those who were considering what they were going to do, this acted as a decisive moment, a chance to change things. But for those nursing wounded jaws or otherwise, they had another responsibility, staying behind. The fight ahead would be one against a tormented, a being that had never once before known defeat. <laughs> And with that, happy anniversary, motherfuckers! Yeah. Good goddamn yeah. session! Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that was goodness. yo the themes this time, guys. Oh, the ah. fucking themes. Ah. <gasps> Good session. I'm sorry for keeping everyone so late. Y'all are the best. Let's get mm -hmm. to fan art instantly. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Let's do it fast. Oh my god. All right. So there we go. It's showing you guys. I'm showing this. Uh, thank you, Dark oh. Wolf Eyes, for putting together these. This imgur it helps a lot. And we got a lot to go through. We so, got a lot to go through. So first off, uh, from Dungeon Master Zero, <sighs> Poster Forty, work in progress. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Oh, we've really. done one of these for each episode. Holy crap. Yeah, we got Slut Arrow from <laughs> Tamor. We got Rolling yeah. That Once on a Friday night final, from Final Dream Machine. We got <laughs> oh, Riddle definitely funny. not Rolling in That One from Mero. She wouldn't. Yeah, those two are from Stab yeah. Cobra Prompts. Check yeah. that out. <laughs> Revolution. Riddle loves trouble. Uh, so that's a much. good breach. Breach from Dream Dream Machine. We got uh, Lover Cole from yeah. Mero. We got an <laughs> Ascalon from Mero. <laughs> and then Inky, uh, check out the AO, the fucking, what is it called? <laughs> Archive of Our Own. Archive of Our Own. People have been making a lot of fix. You should read them if you like reading fix. Uh, we got the myth of the satirical gay fan fiction. From, <laughs> <laughs> we have a Verona <laughs> from Final Dream Machine. Oh, look at oh, that. Oh, lovely. Yeah, we got oh. another another fan fiction that you can check on and check out oh, in the archive that, of your own. Is that Ooh. a gay a skeleton in Argos fan fiction? Wow, that's so crazy. Kinda, that's yeah. crazy. It's kind of gay. <laughs> <laughs> so funny that they made this training thing. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah. Let's do our final fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> training. Baby. Fine dancing. Uh, and then we got yeah, we got Ace. Frog. Ace. Ooh. Ace. And a frog in the middle! It's, it's yeah, frog. and then we got some Yo! anniversaries. We got a bunch Holy of anniversary uh, work in progresses from Leaf. So we got the this one just like a lot of characters. Yeah, the ambition. Yeah. Got a bunch of Polaroids, so I'm just gonna oh my oh, God. I love these. Oh, I love the moon. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're so precious. These are the kind of things that Cal has up behind the bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 a pyrometra is falling uh, in the Robin, city. Robin <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. the swimsuit oh episode. Oh. The, yeah. Oh, they, 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 they're like oh. Hello and Melly. And then we got Riddle. Oh, they're so precious. Oh, oh she looks Riddle. so good. Comfy Riddle. Robin. Robin. Aww. Argos. Arnassi! 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 Got an ace. Ace. Oh, uh, God. Mm. Three dace is... Oh, fuck yeah. so powerful. Yeah. Don't <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah, that'll happen. laughs> bring me into the room. You expect anything different. Yo, so we got it twice. twice. And then we got an aura from Mero. Aura! Uh, Yay! Twelve free healthcare, bro. <laughs> yeah, that was free. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, then we got a nine. We're gonna take samples of, of his elements. That's gonna happen. Oh, we yeah. got <laughs> trouble like it. Delicious. <laughs> yeah, classic cube problems with Rubik's cube. Classic cube problems. <laughs> <laughs> got, got this. Yeah. Oh, and more Polaroids. More Polaroids. Oh. Start getting, start getting cold. The boy in the 
Oh, uh, the, the last hope. The last hope. <laughs> then we got a breach. Yes. Breach. Nice. And a cam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then we got Riddle and Treble. Oh, oh hell yeah. Riddle. Yeah. God, she's Treble. eating her. <laughs> yeah, Pixie. Sick. Oh. And then watch Shirling Intense on Tuesday, so the third wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah. So good. Oh, I love it. Then we got a dill. Oh, oh, oh my god. Dill from Marrow. That's so good. Th then we got Argo's Burning from Pope. So what's a Pope? You and I are we wouldn't know what we want. Yeah, just one week where nothing happens. <laughs> Maybe if we know what the Pope is. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Isabeau. <laughs> Isabeau. The nasty. Oh, uh, then oh, Babe god. got four and then fucking... Uh, who is that man? <laughs> Who's that I don't guy? Know. Who... Oh my god. I forgot. <laughs> we got the bar. Oh my god. Oh my god. These are so good. Let's make this happen, Very girl. Cute. Let's make this happen, girl. Yeah, riddle. Yeah. Oh my god. They're no, so good. No. Oh, sick as hell. Yeah, from oh. Angel Fighter. Oh, that's so cool. And then we have. Oh, look. He <laughs> <laughs> stole the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Papa Basil oh, and Sam. Oh, <laughs> the, fam. the family. Yeah, Stefano. Romero. Oh, lovely. Oh, and then, yeah, we got the final <gasps> Polaroid. Happy yeah. one year. Oh my, oh, my god. god. <laughs> oh my god. And then a uh, bonus for Ronis. <laughs> <God. laughs> <laughs> then an eternity for Mero. Eternity. <laughs> then we have. A frog. Let's go! <laughs> the September really? creature is dead. Long live the September creature. She's dead. Oh, uh, in a wheelchair. Uh, she thought you were gonna kill her. I mean, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> cookie. Oh, she's so happy. Cookies. Yeah, the Marseille. Oh my god, Dungeon oh, sure. Master Zero, it. fucking killing it. Zero oh, third yeah. wheel. Oh. Yeah. Aww. On a date. <laughs> we got Fio. Fio! Oh, oh, cute. That was very cute. Got Say swaddled up. Oh. Swaddled. He is comfy. Yeah. Let's we got go. Grass <laughs> <laughs> Daddy <laughs> getting ready for the beach episode. <laughs> then Willard. This. Willard! Willard! Yeah, and then we got. Oh, nice. Oh, Yo, that's 41. so sick. sick. That's and yeah, really cool. I think that's it. Holy right. shit, squad. Y'all are the best. Yeah. You are the fucking best. In fucking incredible nice. work. I want to thank you guys for coming out uh, for this episode, and I want to thank you guys for showing up every Tuesday. And uh, also, players, you guys do amazing. Oh, right, Thank uh, you fucking... For streaming, my guy! Yeah, yeah, right, uh, if you want to watch the missing boss fight, it's very tense, it's up on the, it's up on the Patreon, it's, 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 it's... it's, it's, it's Patreon! Sick. Yeah! Or, Worth I'll post it. it right now. Um, okay! Yeah, uh, but also, okay. come I back tomorrow! I want... Uh, to thank uh, you, Jay! Whoa! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're running this every Tuesday, man. What? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> what? Right, yes. You've been pouring an... In a ridiculous amount of work. Me? You, <laughs> you made Thank this you. incredible like Thank quality you. and stuff. Literally fucking like <laughs> you're reinventing the wheel for shit like this. Like I point at the Argos shit yeah. today. <laughs> like, you pull shit like this, right? And yeah. like you pull all the stops for sessions, and then you're like, all right. Now time to work on next week, and that's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, and it's Thank incredible so to see. Much. Thank you so much and, for doing this. Oh, and you guys, Roma, you fucking kick ass too. Thank all of you yeah. for, for this every week. Yeah, and if you want to tell lovely. tell them how much they do, uh, make sure to join the Discord. And yeah, yeah. Uh, make sure to check out tomorrow, where we're just gonna do a lot of fun stuff in the stream, same fun time, same stuff. place. So yeah. See you guys Thank then. you all for playing. Thank you all for streaming. Thank you all for watching. 
Yeah. Have a good night, chat. Have a good yeah. night. Happy anniversary. Bye, Eat an extra thing. <laughs> <laughs>